If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, hunters, woods people, forest explorers, etc., what are some strange things you've seen while in the woods, trails, or dark forests that you still can't explain? I have a private cabin in a remote area in California. It's on an Indian reservation. That's all I can say about that. But my tribe had stories of certain things in the forest and woods. But last night, I saw something I couldn't explain. I was setting traps by the river for coyotes that kept getting in my chicken cage and eating my chickens. Suddenly, the woods went really quiet, and I immediately felt it. I was kneeling down when it happened and froze for a few seconds. Then I grabbed my rifle and stood up. I heard a type of weird breathing and then a low growl. And I saw it from about 30 or 40 feet. Red eyes stared at me. At first, I thought it was a bear. Then it peeked its head from behind a tree. And I swear, it looked like a gorilla. It had black fur, red eyes, and long, muscular arms. At first, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I slowly backed up. And I left my other flashlight on the ground. And I used the light on my rifle. I never took my eyes off it. Then I felt my truck. I jumped in, started it, and raced back to my cabin. That whole night, I felt like I was being watched. It is really creepy. Like, WTF, is this real? My elders told me it was a Sasquatch. But I don't believe in that crap. It looked like a monkey, man. But I don't know how to feel. I thought it was all fiction and fantasy. I've made fun of my uncles, who were avid hunters in the 1970s, for saying they had sightings. I still don't believe it. Anyone else see strange things in the woods? My mom and I went camping in the woods of northern Wisconsin. When we arrived at the campground, we were the only people there. Which was weird by itself, sure. Everything went semi-normal until our tent filled to the brim with spiders, and we ended up sleeping in the car. It was about 2 to 3 a.m., and I was wide awake because I was just restless and almost paranoid that someone was out there in the woods. I was looking out the left rear window when I saw a large portal open. I couldn't believe my eyes, so I pinched and slapped myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. I definitely wasn't. I could feel the pain. As I watched, the portal got larger and wider, about 7 to 8 tall. It was bluish green. Immediately after this, I woke up my mom to see if she could see what I was seeing too. She did, freaked out a bit, and said, don't move and be quiet. I saw one humanoid figure come out with a lantern. He looked around and then gestured for the others to come out. I would say 5 to 6 people came out, almost an Amish Mennonite sort of clothing. They all had lanterns as well. They gathered around each other and seemed to talk, then one by one they all entered the woods in a single file line. The first man to walk out of the portal was the one to go back into the portal. After he got in, the portal closed, and we watched the humanoids walk into the woods until we couldn't see their light anymore. My mom immediately started the car, and we left in complete silence for the entire car ride back home to Illinois. Ever since then, both my mom and I have been avid believers in the paranormal and aliens. I'm wondering if anyone has ever seen anything like this before or experienced it before, because I know this sounds absolutely insane, but I swear it happened. My dad and I observed an eerie orange light emanating from the pitch black woods around 7 p.m. while we were sitting on the porch. Despite the dense tree cover blocking any moonlight, this mysterious glow persisted, leaving me with a sense of the paranormal, especially since there were no stars visible. Next, my father reported seeing it transition to a soft pale blue hue, and then it disappeared. Around 2002-2003, my friend and I lived in a shitty trailer on the outskirts of Old Fort. Dumpy, remote, and surrounded by woods, it was a creepy place in general, but it gave us our first taste of life outside our parents' houses. One day we went walking or hiking to explore the area and maybe got two to three miles away before we realized the sun was setting and it was time to turn back. We'd gotten fairly close to home before the sun was officially down, and we had to rely on memory and moonlight to get us back. My buddy was ahead of me, but all of a sudden I saw him stop short with his head turned sharply to the right. Do you see that? He asked. I followed his gaze and saw a light in the distance. It was 50 to 100 yards away, but it was at about chest height, like someone was holding a lantern out in front of them. Hello? He called, and, without warning or response, the light began coming straight for us. Fast. The thing that instantly terrified both of us was that, as it came closer, the light never wavered from its initial position. It didn't bob up or down like a person running, nor did it seem to weave it all in and out of the trees. It just made a beeline directly towards us. I remember hearing him say, what the duck? And we both started running as fast as we could. We weren't too far away from the trailer and just ran in the approximate direction and never looked back. 
we ended up coming out of the woods on old Fort Sugar Hill Road, not too far from our place, but thankfully reached some semblance of civilization without it catching up to us. We stuck to the road to finish the trip home and were both shaking by the time we plopped down on the living room couch. Not to mention covered with cuts and scratches from running like mad through the woods. I still have no rational explanation for the event, but we were 100% sober, and it was 100% real. Duck you, old fort. Me and my partner went to the Tio Lane turnoff a week ago, and there along the hike is a turnoff that has a beautiful small pond that you can hike around. The first time we were there, it was uncomfortably quieter than the rest of the area outside of this turnoff. It just felt like someone was watching you. I mean utter silence. So we walk around and leave, and nothing happens other than feeling a bit uncomfortable. Today we go back with our roommates to show them the fall foliage at that turn off, and it's the same feeling, but there's four of us, so we go farther in. There's some huts that people have made and the occasional gunshot in the distance, but overall it's very quiet, almost no sound. On our way back, I glanced at maybe 20 feet of something big and dark, and with a very fast gait swiped through the trees, this thing must have been 6 feet. It was not a bird, it was too quiet for a normal hiker or person, and it didn't have the shape of a stag. I mean, zip by in the peripheral woods to my left. But I don't mention it at first and keep walking and talking for about 15 to 30 seconds, then my other roommate tells us to stop and hush. They then say they saw something rush from the left into the woods, maybe 10 feet in front of them, which is the same description as what I saw. I didn't hear footsteps and described it as 6 feet and fast. I then tell them what I saw, and we look around the bend, where there should be a clearing and where a person should have been, but nothing is there. I don't know what to say about this other than I've been in the woods many times and haven't felt like this before, and I have seen stags, and this just didn't fit the bill. A normal person, even a jogger, couldn't move like this. And my roommate, I would say, is usually a skeptic and tries to find a logical explanation. And they also admitted that they had no idea what it was or the explanation for the thing or movement. Has anyone experienced something like this at this location or near the Kingfisher Trail? There's this forest near my house here in southeast England that me and my friends use for mountain biking, but it's got a very uncomfortable, strange vibe to it. The only person we ever see here is the same older man walking his dog, but he always appears when we're feeling really uneasy due to the energy, he will just suddenly walk past and you never see him coming. There is a tree that has become a memorial for a dog that died, coincidentally a German Shepherd, the same breed as the man has got and looks very similar. Sometimes, in the furthest corners of the woods, I distinctly hear a dog collar behind me or nearby. Here's where things get a bit strange. There's a spot we use for campfires and drinking, we were there late at night, around 9 to 10 pm, but gradually began feeling creeped out as the energy started to increase, we started hearing a very strange noise, it definitely was not a fox or bird, it sounded very sweet and innocent at first until it turned into blood curdling shrieking. We quickly packed our stuff and went on a mission to get the hell out of Dodge, there's a field that serves as the main access point to the woods, we were using the main path through it and got an overwhelming sense of dread, sadness and almost anger mixed together, in the bushes to the side of the path we heard running, very very heavy running, and all of a sudden we started heading the most horrible growling and screaming noises getting worse and worse until we got to the exit of the field and it all stopped, we didn't hear it run away but all the noises and running just stopped, we all had strange dreams that night. One time, I heard very heavy running footsteps in the bushes right behind me while my friend was having a pee. I turned around to see if it was him, but there's no way it was because he hadn't moved from that spot. He came back and asked if I heard the running too. Two days ago I went back there for the first time in around five months alone, as I moved away from the local area, the strange feeling was still there and in some areas felt like it has gotten worse, but I didn't let it bother me, I went back again today and there was heavy rainfall the last couple of days so the ground is very muddy, I kept hearing the dog collar that follows me around and I noticed strange hoof marks in the ground but they were very inconsistent, groups of them would appear and then there wouldn't be any more until around 15 to 20 meters up the path, they definitely wasn't there two days ago and these woods take so long to get into many people wouldn't bother going there and it's impossible to get a horse in there. My theory is, very unlikely but plausible, it could be the devil's hoof marks, the presence definitely feels demonic. Not me, but my dad and his brother. He was passing an abandoned mineshaft, which is common in Appalachia, and he stopped to inspect the slurry for animal tracks. He saw an unusual three-toed footprint. He guessed that it was about the size of an average man's palm. This was in the early 2000s, and I can distinctly remember him and my uncle talking about it when they came home from the woods that day. For reference, my dad is now 70 and has spent his entire life in rural Appalachia as an avid outdoorsman. There isn't a footprint in those hills that he couldn't identify. 
It didn't really cross my mind too much until I ran across a documentary in 2020 about unusual three-toed footprints and other strange instances in the same area. Funnily enough, the footprints in the documentary were also associated with abandoned mine shafts. Without ever mentioning the documentary to my dad, I showed him a picture of one of the footprints from the documentary and asked him if it had been similar to the one he found years ago. He enthusiastically confirmed that they were basically identical. Super crazy. So I'm not exactly a paranormal believer per se, but I've had a couple of experiences while hunting or hiking that I just can't explain rationally. The most unnerving one happened probably 7 or 8 years ago. Normally, I'd hunt for some property that my family owns. I don't even remember the reason anymore why I decided to hunt on public land this time, probably just a change of scenery. I remember that it was an evening in the fall, but it was a fairly uncharacteristically warm day. I got to the access road and pulled off to the spot where everyone pulls off to park and walk in, and I noticed there were a couple of old boys already there. There is nothing too weird about them except that there is no truck or vehicle for them to have pulled into. They also didn't have guns with them but were dressed in hunter orange. But, at the time, I just figured that they were backpackers or campers, there's not too far from this spot in a campground, and it's not uncommon for folks to spend weekends away from their family for some peace and quiet for their hunting trip. Anyways, they seemed friendly enough, and there was absolutely nothing said to make them any different than hundreds of other fellows I've met hunting, they were just a couple of hillbillies from the sounds of it. We shot the shit for a couple of minutes, they took off, and I sat on my phone for a bit trying to give them a head start because I was afraid they'd drive off the squirrels. Except I clearly didn't wait long enough. Probably 10 minutes up the trail, it curved to the left, but I heard noises coming directly from ahead. It sounded bigger than a squirrel, but I also like seeing any sort of animal, and it didn't sound too far off the main path. When I crept off the path, the ground started to drop, so I was able to look down and see my new pals, but I was not acting right at all. This is going to be hard to explain without a visual, but they just weren't moving like normal people. Their movements were jerky, and it's almost like they'd forgotten that things like knees and other joints were able to bend. I didn't stick around long because, frankly, it was ducking terrifying. I backed away, slow and quiet, to the trail, and then hauled my ass back to my car. I've spoken with several of the more open-minded outdoorsmen in the area, and none of them had ever heard of anything like that. Drugs were the most common theory that I've heard, and I know that's the logical assumption. But man, I've seen folks on a lot of different drugs, and those movements just look too unnatural. I've done some online searching in the years since for similar incidents in my area, but I have yet to find anything that sounds like it. My aunt, my brother, my cousin, and I were visiting our grandparents' house in Washington. They lived in a pretty remote area, with only a handful of other houses around and a good chunk of forest between each of them. Keep in mind that it's also kind of an island, so they don't get many funky creatures there. My aunt and I went out while it was dark outside just walking the path in the forest and trying to figure out what was making a loud noise, not a weird one, just a normal forest sound. I said frogs, and she said crickets, lol. I was right. Anyhow, we pass a pond area and make our way to a clearing. I don't know if this is relevant, but the clearing was a bit small, with an apple tree in the middle. That was where my brother, cousin, and I would hang out whenever we were outside. When we reached the clearing, I immediately got a bad feeling. I figured, you know, it's dark, I'm typically terrified of the dark, and I'm tired, but nothing is really going to happen. The path was a bit overgrown around there, so we decided to turn back. Right before we did, though, I caught a glimpse of what could have been a really big owl up in one of the trees, just staring at us. Now, I'm an Arizona girl, so I don't know what creatures are normal in the forest, but this thing just didn't feel right to me. Just like the woman in my other story. It just gave me a weird vibe. But my aunt kept walking, and I caught up. Keep in mind that the path was pretty short, and it only takes about 10-ish minutes to get to the clearing and 10 minutes to walk back. But when we got closer to the house, we heard my grandmother yelling for us. We run back to the house, and she says we've been gone for hours. We swear we had only been out for at most half an hour, and when my brother and cousin come back, they tell us they had been out looking for us. We check the time, and they're right. Another interesting thing that could be connected is that a few days before that, we had heard some really funky noises coming from the woods while we were out making s'mores. Even my grandparents, who had lived there longer than I've been alive, admitted that it was unlike anything they had heard before. It continued getting closer and closer and stopped any time someone tried to get video of it. Eventually, I had to go inside because it was freaking me out so bad. Not really too interesting, but y'all asked me to share. Everything else could probably be explained, but the time loss thing really gets me still, especially considering the other time loss story. 
I am an avid hunter, with more than 10 years of actual experience and a childhood of going hunting with my father, uncle, and friends. I have almost exclusively hunted in Denmark, with the exception of two hunting trips to Africa. I am part of a consortium that rents the hunting right on a rather large patch of forest close to the highway, near the city of Borup, Denmark. My weird experience was last year around the start of July, nearing the end of the roebuck season, where some of our trail cams had caught a nice six ends with its antlers way longer than its ears and nice bases, which gave the extra motivation to spend the full hunting season in the hoaxits. The place I was assigned was a rather good one. It is about 5 meters high, standing up against some large trees on the edge of a forest, with the back against some old forest of oak, cottonwood, and beech. The front faces some grassy area, which is cut in the fall, allowing for some nice foxing, ending after about 150 meters, and after that, farming fields. To the front right, some new pine trees have been planted, about 5 years old, fenced in by a deer fence, and to the back right, some older pines used for Christmas decoration have been planted. To the left, an old swamp area is located, which is quite wooded and dense. The stand is placed along a trail going along the edge of the old forest, going from left to right. I like to get in place early, both to avoid spoking the animals and to enjoy the forest awakening. I would guess about 04.30 to 05.00. I was dark, though the tusk had already begun. I settled with my rifle, coffee, and jerky. A little later, but before sunrise, something comes crashing through the woods to my left. I could see the silhouette of it, and it was way too big to be a deer. It was most likely a stag or fallow deer. It was moving on the tractor track going along the swamp, and it did not seem to mind its surroundings, judging by the amount of noise it made. At a certain moment, I could have sworn I saw an arm, but it was most likely the antlers of a buck. Moments later, something came rustling through the forest floor to my right, and I quickly turned around. The little noise I made must have alerted it, because it stopped right on the trail. At first glance through the scope, I thought it was a fox, with its pointy ears and nose, but it was huge. Much larger than a Great Dane and built like a bear. How do I know? Well, first of all, I have measured all the distances to the different edges of forests. Secondly, the damn thing almost reached the lower pine branches, which are cut to breast height to use for Christmas decorations. Due to the light, its colors were hard to judge but certainly dark, and it had a rough coat of fur. Please remember that Denmark does not have any great predators, especially in Zealand. It let out a growl, which I can best compare to a lion's roar, just much coarser. I have not much experience with great predators, but I have heard lions in Africa, and that is the only other sound I have experienced cutting through my bones. It gave me chills down my spine, and it felt like my blood was freezing. It then leapt over the deer fence in a way that could best be compared to how a house cat moves. Grapping the top of the fence and jumping over it. It moved with such elegance that only a predator can. I could see movement down through the young pine trees until it suddenly stopped. And its head appeared above the trees, like it was searching for some smell. Those trees are more than two meters high. I can still figure out how the hell it reached above the trees. It then moved off. I don't know for how long I sat in the stand, trying to comprehend what I had seen, but suddenly it was morning and bright. I forgot everything about the buck, I just wanted to see if there were any tracks after the animal. Normally, when I move away from the stand, I unload the rifle to remove the risk of an accident, but I still remember how I told myself not to unload the rifle this time. I did not want to meet that thing without a rifle. When I got down, I walked the 125 meters or so to where it had crossed the path. I could see some of the grass that had been flattened, but not clear prints. When I was in middle school, around age 14, I had this friend that I would hang out with every single day after school. We would mainly sit on the edge of the woods outside of my house and talk for hours. One day, while we were talking, I heard a voice that sounded just like my dad screaming my name, telling me to come quick. I knew my dad was inside my house, so I ran into it as fast as I could. I thought something had happened to my mom. When I got there, I was completely out of breath, and both of my parents were sitting on the couch watching TV. I asked them if they had called me, and they said no. I asked them multiple times, and they kept telling me that nobody had called me. I felt this sense of dread in my stomach and walked back outside. I asked my friend if he had heard the voice too, and he said that he had. I asked him what the voice said, to make sure he wasn't lying, and he repeated the exact words and agreed that he thought my dad had called me inside. Does anyone know what this could have been? I live in a wooded area in the south. This experience has freaked me out, even though it happened years ago. If anyone has had anything similar happen or has any advice to offer, sharing it would be appreciated. Nothing strange has happened for a few years, but recently, 
Some weird stuff has happened that made me recall this memory. So last night, about 1 a.m., I was lying in bed with my better half, and we were talking, and I heard a loud scream from the woods behind the house. About 60 acres that border a lake at the westernmost point. I got up and looked, but I didn't see anything but the normal outlines of the storage shed and the barn, and then the darkness of the woods. As I continued to listen, I heard the scream again and realized it was a pack of coyotes that had gotten into something, we have a pack of 20 that roam the area. I didn't think much of it other than that they went quiet almost immediately after downing whatever they were searching for. This is strange because normally they call the rest of the pack in, and they are very vocal for about 30 minutes while they feed. Well, the rest of the night went on without any issues. The next day, today, we decided to take a walk through the woods and just have a little fun and see if we could spot any deer tracks as the ground was frozen. During the walk, however, we came upon a large tuft of deer fur where it was obviously attacked and eaten by something, assuming it was the coyotes. As we walked, we came upon a steep hill next to the edge of the lake, which is frozen over at this point. However, things in the woods got really quiet and very still, I mean, no birds, no wind, no nothing. At that point, my girlfriend looked at me, and we both heard an erroneous sound in the distance. It sounded like a howl, however, there was a gurgling sound to it. It was high-pitched and echoed through the woods. We sat still for about five minutes and listened, and we realized that there were two sounds, both the exact same, but from different directions, one to the west and the other to the south. Immediately, I grabbed our kids, and we started walking back towards the house. However, just as we moved, I heard an airy crash in the trees and then another sound, but the nearest I can describe this one as was a loud, rapid clicking sound similar to the sound of the Predator from the Predator vs. Aliens movies. We would walk for a bit, then I would stop while they continued, and I could hear something still slowly moving behind us in the woods about 100 yards out. We kept walking to the house, and right before we crossed into the yard, I stopped and looked back, and just for a moment, I saw a blur of brown move down the overlook in the trees, and it stopped behind a large group of felled trees. I didn't stop to investigate any further because it was already past dusk and I didn't want to be out in the woods after dark with no light and no weapon. So, right now, I keep looking out to the wood lines, waiting, but I just don't know what I'm waiting for. I replaced all the lights around the house, and I am not really sure where to proceed from here. Thoughts or suggestions? I went camping with my mom, dad, and brother deep in the woods when I was about 10 years old. I remember it was morning, and the sun was just rising. There was a slight fog present in the woods around us, and everyone kept remarking about how pretty it was. I had to go pee, so I walked down a hill to the edge of the woods towards a wooden outhouse. It was a good distance away from where my family had set up camp, so I couldn't hear their conversations anymore. As I approached the wooden outhouse, I heard disturbing wailing and whimpering coming from the woods behind it. I can only describe it as sounding like several people sobbing together. I remember being petrified by these strange noises, but I figured it was my imagination and went into the outhouse, did my business, and left. When I left the outhouse, I paused for a moment to listen, but the wailing was gone, and I noticed that the fog had also let up. It seemed weird that the noises had stopped so quickly. I remember asking my parents if they saw anyone down there or if there were people in the woods, which freaked them out. When I told them what I heard, they accused me of making it up just to scare them, but to this day, I always wonder what the hell those noises were because I've never heard anything like them since. This happened to a friend of mine and me about a month ago. She and I were at the local fair, messing around, riding rides, and playing games. Then we went to the livestock barn to see the critters. She's a city girl and has never seen a cow beyond pictures, and I am a country boy who unfortunately lives in the city currently. So I love going to fairs that have livestock and weeping quietly on the inside for the life that I desperately miss. Anyway, we got ready to leave and were walking back to my truck. Granted, this is about 11 at night, so it's pitch black, and you have to walk all the way down this gravel path, which is bordered on one side by forest, before you get to the parking area. As we're nearing the area where my truck was, we were still close enough to the woods, and all of a sudden, we see this pair of deer shoot out of the wood line, book it across the parking area, and head for another stretch of trees. Almost immediately after, we heard this god-awful wailing sound. It was quiet at first, but then it got louder and louder. There are now plenty of things screeching in the woods, but this was like nothing I've ever heard. It was seriously one of those I wish I had something to record with moments. If you've ever heard a baby deer crying, it sounded like that, but add a rabbit screaming, cats fighting, and that stereotypical hawk scream that you hear in those western movies, and mix them all together, not like they're coming from different sources all at once, but like the sounds are all blended together and coming out of the same mouth. My friend is frozen, 
She's just standing there. I had to push her into my truck, only to realize she was bawling her eyes out. We left, and on the way back to her house, she told me that she'd blacked out as soon as the screeching noise started. She didn't faint, but she said she felt really lightheaded. I'm an experienced outdoorsman. I live in the mountains of northwest Colorado. I worked as a fishing guide and have spent many nights camping in the backcountry. The area where I live is surrounded by a national forest. Having lived in several cities, I've always been more comfortable in the woods than anywhere. I spent weeks fishing, hiking, and camping in remote areas of Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. I encountered many black bears and a few grizzlies. Lions are elusive, so I've only seen one. Occasionally, I see fresh tracks and have the feeling of being watched. I have only been scared a few times in the woods. Only twice have I been terrified, and I have no good explanation for either event. I decided to go on an afternoon hike. I like a particular trail where I park about 6 miles from home. I parked and saw one other truck. I drank water and ate a sandwich before locking everything, including my phone and gun, in the truck. I intentionally traveled light so I could move fast. I only planned about 30 minutes in and 30 minutes back. Wearing running shoes, shorts, a t-shirt, and a bright yellow baseball hat. It is notable that the hat is so obnoxiously bright that friends say it probably scares fish. I started running around 2 p.m., as the first few miles are relatively flat. The trail follows a creek that flows off a mountain through a canyon. There are several trails that branch off, heading up into the mountains. Prefer a particular trail that follows the edge of the canyon with a creek flowing below. It's absolutely gorgeous. Before the trail gets steep, it takes you through a large aspen grove. There is a point about 30 minutes in where I plan to turn around. The trail becomes increasingly less worn and more difficult beyond this point. I have visited the area many times. Something felt off this time. I didn't feel normal. I moved through the aspen grove before taking a steep trail up the mountain when I got a strange feeling. I stopped and noticed that it was quiet. Something made me look up the mountain to the right at a point several hundred yards above. I noticed a large granite rock formation. The area is off trail, so I'd never looked there before. I thought I saw movement. Probably a black bear, as they are common. I was curious, so I pressed on. I was definitely not scared at this point, but I noticed the silence. I continued hiking and reached the point where I planned to turn around. I decided to hike further, hoping to see what caught my eye earlier. The trail becomes overgrown and harder to follow at this point. I had been further than this before but was never off trail. I noticed an aspen tree bent over the trail. It had been uprooted and broken off. The tree was green, so it was odd. It could have been a lightning strike, but it wasn't clear. I walked maybe another eighth mile, then took a right off the trail, heading in the direction of granite rocks. I wasn't concerned about getting lost since it was easy to orient myself in the canyon and creek. I hiked off the trail up toward a large meadow with many granite boulders. Reflecting on it, something was compelling me to go to the meadow. I was scrambling up a hill to get to where I could sit. I got to the meadow and noticed the rocks. It looked like a granite fortress. I sat down on a log, enjoying the scenery. Looking down into the canyon at the creek below, meadows and rocks were behind me. I looked around and didn't see any animals. I suddenly noticed it was dead quiet. It had been a sunny, warm day, with birds and bugs everywhere. I wasn't scared yet, but I noticed the extreme silence. I could hear the creek before, so it wasn't as startling as now. I began taking off my running shoes. This is notable as this isn't something I normally do since I have permanent nerve damage to my right ankle. I walk or run with a limp and sometimes wear a brace. I remember feeling like my feet were burning. It wasn't particularly hot, and it was not over 70 F. I was becoming unnerved by the dead silence and started tying my shoes. This is where things turn weird. I clearly heard my father call me by my first name. The voice was loud and came from behind. I talked to my father earlier in the day. He was at his home in Georgia. There was no way he was calling from the rocks behind me. I immediately became overcome with fear. It is difficult to describe how overwhelming it is. I began sweating and shaking. It was like knowing a lion is stalking without seeing it, but more terrifying. Definitely not ducking around at this point. I stood up and turned to look behind me, and I saw nothing but the large granite rocks. Started hauling asses down the hill towards the canyon and trail below. I was absolutely terrified and felt something was chasing me literally stumbled, fell, and rolled down the mountain. I stood up and couldn't recognize anything. It looked completely different. No canyon, creek, or trail. It was cloudy, and I wasn't in the same place anymore. At this point, I started hauling ass in what I thought was the right direction. 
I eventually found the trail and recognized my location. I sprinted through the Aspen Grove back to the truck. I didn't look at the watch. I'm not sure how long I was gone. I was so terrified, I could hardly drive home. I'm not sure what happened, but I've never been so afraid for my life. I know something was stalking and chasing me. Yes, I have gone back to the area. Too afraid to go to the same meadow with granite boulders. I consider going back well armed, but instincts tell me it's a bad place. I'll never hike again without my .357 Magnum and haven't since. Something scared the hell out of me, and I feel I was close to being a victim. I trust that my flight instinct kicked in for a good reason. There are documented missing 411 cases in this area. Last year, I was staying at a fairly secluded cabin in Hocking Hills, Ohio. My husband and I were stargazing, and it was around 2.30 in the morning. I noticed a huge, glowing orb-like thing, I can't even say object, it was so strange, appear in front of us. It was about as large as my arm span if I were to make a circle in the air with my arms outstretched. Hovering about 10 to 15 feet in the air, about the same distance away from us. It was glowing an intense, brilliant emerald green. I began to lift my arm to point at it and say, what is that? When my husband suddenly turned his flashlight on, pointing it directly at the orb. It quickly zoomed over our heads, and when I turned to look behind me, it was gone. This all took place within maybe 3 to 5 seconds. The strangest part, to me, is that my husband said he doesn't know why he turned the flashlight on. He didn't see the orb. He saw something zoom over our heads, but he says it wasn't green. What I saw was glowing like a dang Christmas tree. Kinda reminded me of the bubble Glenda from Wizard of Oz travels in, but emerald green. Other random things of note. There was a forest kitty that had been sitting next to me for a few hours outside that night. It wasn't easily spooked, as in, we had already turned the flashlight on a few times to look for something we'd dropped, and it never left. It was also still there when we both left for bathroom breaks and came back to the spot. After the orb situation, I looked down, and the kitty was gone. A few minutes after I saw the orb, we heard a pack of coyotes going nuts pretty close by. It definitely added to the spooky factor. Lastly, my father passed away a few months prior to this experience. I read that orbs can be manifestations of lost loved ones, so I figured I should include that. My uncle had some friends that raised cattle in Gomas, and they would often invite me to go hunt rattlesnakes, rabbits, and the almost non-existent population of deer that lived in that desertic area of Mexico. One night, we decided to go rabbit hunting. We were armed with some old 22 LR rifles and spotlights while we rode in the bed of a large Chevy truck designed to move cattle or cargo. I have always been easy to scare, there was plenty to be scared of in that area, mainly people, so this old dude proceeded to start telling me a story about a creek we were approaching. He called it the Devil's Creek, and it was an isolated location known for satanic rituals in honor of a prostitute who had lived in a small adobe house near the creek, where she killed the men that didn't satisfy her. As soon as the story ended, we drove past the adobe house, which was completely wrapped in barbed wire to prevent people from getting in. Even the roof, or what remained of it, was wrapped. It was not a pretty sight. Not far from that was a small hill that hid the creek until you were right there. As soon as we crossed the hill, we saw about 20 candle lights being carried by people walking towards the creek, carrying chickens and dragging goats by leashes. I personally did not see the animals, but other people in my group claimed to have. I was only in this area for a short amount of time as we drove by, but it was enough to stay on my mind 20 years later. I grew up in northern NJ and had been to KSP countless times with my family for kayaking, biking, fishing, and hiking. Nothing else strange ever happened aside from this one experience. Some family members were visiting from out of state, and we decided to go hiking through the state park trails. It was me, my mom, sister, aunt, and two cousins. I was around 9 or 10 at the time. I ventured off the trail a bit to search for salamanders under rocks, and everyone else continued on the trail just ahead of me. This area wasn't densely wooded at all, and I could clearly see the trail at all times. I was bending down and looking at something with my back towards my group, and suddenly, when I stood up to rejoin them, I felt like I was in a dream. It was such a weird feeling, the best I can describe it is that it felt like I no longer existed in this reality, like my feet weren't touching the ground, and everything went silent around me. I had no clue what to make of this, but I didn't feel afraid at all. I made my way back to the trail, and once I did, I could see my group up ahead, and the feeling completely disappeared and everything was normal again. This memory stuck with me through my whole life, and I've never come up with any explanation for it. I live somewhere between DeKalb, Illinois, and Rockford. It's a very rural area. A lot of cornfields and then forested areas. 
a kid went missing a year or so ago, a brother of an ex-co-worker, and they found him months later dead in a field from exposure. The field was only two miles away from our house. Well, I was riding bikes with my friend one day. My town is pretty small, 5,000 people, fewer than, and has two decent-sized forest preserves. Well, we decided to go to a place we'd never been before. We walked into the forest. I was a pretty well-hiked kid. Sure-footed and smart, he had been hiking on the land before. My friend was less of that. Although she still remembers this as well. It was then that I felt the call everyone on here seemed to be talking about. The feeling that the forest is drawing you in. I started walking quickly into the forest, my friend behind me. I genuinely felt that I was being drawn in, a feeling I'll never listen to again. It was a dreamlike, creepy feeling of keep walking. The experience feels like a dream, but my mom remembers me talking about it, and my friend remembers it. A stick snaps. A thick one. I look up, but my friend doesn't. I see a huge beast of a dog, a wolf? In black. It jumped behind a tree, then disappeared. I can't understand or explain what it was, but it looked like pure shadow. We don't have black wolves, or any wolves, here. And it disappeared as soon as I saw it. I bolted wordlessly. My friend followed. She never saw it, but she remembers the feeling. I was raised super religious, and for weeks I thought it had to be an omen of my death. I cried to my mom about it. I slept with the lights on for months. I thought it genuinely had to be some strange omen. I thought I was dying. Anyway, I can't figure out, or even think of, what that was. So strange. The feeling may have been worse than the visual. I have four personal stories that I cannot fully explain, let alone begin to understand. 1. Forest Lake, Alger County, sometime in the years between 2008 and 2010. I went fishing with my dad and brother, we were going for pike and walleye. It was a cloudy day with a little bit of a chill, but nothing out of the ordinary. At one point, probably two hours into the activity, an overwhelming sound or siren? That I've never heard before began, and we all looked at each other. I can't explain the sound, but it was not organic or natural, it sounded mechanical or not from nature. I asked my dad what was going on, and he had no clue, he's an avid outdoorsman and hunter slash fisherman, he's always in the woods, he's also a retired cop, and he's what some in this community would consider a trained observer. I could tell from his expression that he was trying to figure out what was going on, a storm alarm? A bomb alert? National Guard, etc. It didn't sound at all like the tornado sirens we have tested throughout the state. The strangest part was that the sound seemed to be coming from above us, we were the only ones on the lake. But all three of us remember that. The sound dissipated after 10 or so minutes, and we immediately went back to shore and called it a day. No reports of alarm testing were done on that date when we got home and began searching online for any explanation. 2. Wetmore, Michigan 2010. My dad and I went on a short trip to visit my grandparents. We both stayed in the guest bedroom. It was a corner room, so there were two windows from two walls, key detail. I want to preface this by saying that the me-up sky is incredibly dark at night, so dark you can't see your own hand in front of your face sometimes. Okay, so that night we got there, and I was woken up in the middle of the night to lights coming from the outside that were so bright I could see everything in the room. I sat up, stomach sick with fear, and realized that the blinds and curtains were shut, the light from outside was so bright that it was lighting the room up just from light seeping through the cracks of the blinds. Frozen and terrified, I pulled the blankets over my head and don't remember anything after. I asked my dad about it the next day, and he had no idea what I was talking about. He said, you probably miss the northern lights. And I took that as the logical conclusion. However, I have since seen the northern lights, they are not bright enough to explain what I experienced. Maybe it was all a dream? 3. Glen Arbor State Campground, Rustic, 2012, my partner and I went camping alone. It was October at the time and very chilly, but we loved the outdoors and wanted to test our camping abilities in colder weather. I had a great day hiking the sand dunes. We ended the night with a fire and fell asleep to the howls of coyotes. Fast forward to the middle of the night, after we have both gone to bed. I wake up and hear footsteps, coming from the woods toward the entrance of the tent. I try to move, but I am completely frozen. I then try and scream to wake my partner up, my mouth opens as wide as possible, but there is no sound, it feels like the oxygen is being vacuumed out of my lungs. The presence rustles the zipper entrance of the tent, my heart is racing. The footsteps are approaching the edge of the tent near where my head is lying, they stop and then proceed into the woods until I can't hear anything at all. I gasp so loudly and shoot right up as soon as I gain the ability to do so and shake my partner awake. Did you hear that? 
she had no idea what I was talking about and, to this day, cannot confirm my experience. P.S. It sounds like sleep paralysis to me, but I've never had that happen before or since then, and we were the only people camping on the site when this occurred. Again, maybe it was all a dream. 4. Porcupine Mountains, Lake of the Clouds, 2014, my partner and I went camping again, this time in a little early autumn. We went on a hike along the ridge line, and about two miles in, we both stopped suddenly at the same time. Do you smell that? Yes, my partner confirmed with concern in her voice. I can't fully describe this smell, as I've never come across it before or since then, but it made the hair on the back of our neck stand up. It was rude and foul. It wasn't a bear, I've bumped into them before in the woods, and they do have a smell, but this scent was not the same. What's even more strange is that the woods were completely still, no sounds, no wind, nothing. My partner and I, after about one minute of still observation, WTF is going? Decided to end our hike short and head back to camp. We still talk about that to this day and have no idea what to make of it, but it makes us uneasy to recall. Back when we were teens, me and my brother were out for a walk outside of our neighborhood. Where we were walking was kind of wooded, but the houses were still pretty close together, yet considerably more in the boonies compared to our place. Anyways, we had almost completed the loop of the area and were around the bend going toward the exit when we heard something. I remember there was a helicopter overhead around the time we both heard this weird guttural yell or growl. Like, right next to us, it was so damn close. It sounded like a mix between a mountain lion, a pissed off house cat, and yet oddly human-like all at once. We both just froze and looked at each other startled, and I started looking around for the source, but there wasn't a single cat or anything animal like that. I was pretty freaked out and practically sped to the road, all the while, my brother kept asking me what the duck that was, but I was too scared to talk about it. It was like a primal type of fear the instant we heard it, and I just kept looking over my shoulder the whole way back. I do wildlife life photography, so I go hiking every Sunday, and I have been for about a year now. With the frequency with which I go hiking, it might be surprising that I have had two experiences, or maybe not. I'm not sure about the frequency. Both of my experiences took place in the western part of Wisconsin. My first experience was at a semi-defunct state campground in the middle of the summer. I say semi-defunct because there was a newer gravel parking lot by the gravel road and a gated off-road leading deeper to what used to be a paved parking lot and paved RV and campsites. It's about a mile from the gravel parking lot to the paved lot, and this walk goes just fine. The road continues past the paved lot for about a mile, then splits into almost non-existent trails. It was after I got past the paved lot that things started to get strange. I started to get a feeling that was hard to describe. It just felt wrong, every step I took, I had the thought, you shouldn't take another step, you should turn around. This feeling kept growing and growing in intensity until I got to the end of the road, and I just couldn't take it anymore. I turned and went back because I had the strong feeling that if I went on a trail, something very bad would happen. The walk back to the gravel lot was just fine, and by the time I got to the lot, the feeling was completely gone, and I looked for agates on the gravel road. The second one, I will say, I think was probably just a deer, but I'll let you decide. This hike was in the early fall. I went off trail, down a gully, and followed a small creek. All in all, it was a good hike until I rounded a bend and saw a cave. My initial thought was to go check it out, then that nagging feeling was like, no, something bad is in there. I was, admittedly, thinking more along the lines of a homeless person. As soon as I turned away, I had that same feeling of being watched, which so many people describe, and I just had to get out of there. So I backtracked my steps and was about two miles into the hike when the feeling suddenly got much, much stronger. Eyes darting all over the place, I was literally almost walking sideways on the trail. Then, all of a sudden, there was a huge crash behind and to the right of me. I didn't see anything before or after the crash. This is where I think it might be a deer, but I didn't see anything. This feeling intensified all the way until I got into my car and locked the doors. It got better as I collected myself in the car. I don't know how to explain these. It could just be an overactive fight or flight response, but they stick out so much from all my other experiences that I can't help but think of them. Let me know what you all think. My ex-girlfriend and I decided to celebrate our one-year anniversary with a camping trip in Tallulah Gorge, Georgia. Deliverance happened to be filmed there. She had made the reservation, but when we got there, we were told that the campground was all full and there was no room. However, they had begun clearing a new campground further into the park. If we didn't mind hiking for one mile, then we were free to use it. So we walked in a mile and set up camp. The Tallulah Woods, all to ourselves. Night fell, and it was a full moon that night. 
The moon was so bright that it felt like a car's headlights were shining on us through the woods. You could see everything perfectly. We made a fire, cooked dinner, made love, and then bedded down for the night. We both fell asleep immediately. I'm not sure what time it was, but we both woke to the sound of something moving through the woods. I sat up and listened closely to see if I could somehow identify what was walking towards us. Whatever it was, it came right toward our tent. With slow and meticulous steps, it began to circle our tent. Each step was fairly slow and thought out, it seemed. My girlfriend was terrified and grabbed my arm and sunk her fingernails into my skin. I whispered for her to stay quiet, while I myself was getting pretty scared. The thing completely circled our tent. We had the tents fly on, so we couldn't see out a window. And the moon must have been directly overhead, because no shadow was cast on the tent as the beast circled. After it circled once, it left, and we heard its footsteps recede down the hill, through the woods, away from us. Somehow, after we both caught our breath back, we managed to fall back asleep. After thinking about it quite a bit, I think it was a coyote. The steps seemed too careful to be a bear, a deer wouldn't have gotten that close to a human smelling tent, it was much too big to be a raccoon. There was no sniffing, snorting, or pawing. I hope it was a coyote. The alternative is that it was a person who was wandering through the woods in the middle of the night. We circled our tent and then wandered off. Duck that. About two weeks ago, I was walking down a small path in the forest I was in. There were not a lot of trees, sometimes small outcroppings of trees. I was rushing to get to my campsite before the sun went down completely. I had made an unplanned stop to admire the view at a lookout, and I stayed there too long, so there were about another 4 to 5 kilometers to go. It was already getting dark, but fortunately, the moon was very bright that night. As I was walking, I was thinking about how I needed to set up my tent and little camping stove to get some more water for the night and tomorrow, so I didn't notice when I took a wrong turn on the path. To be fair, I didn't even know that there was a split in the path. I noticed that I had taken a wrong turn when the path led me into an outcropping of trees. I had only walked a couple of meters into the outcropping, but when I turned back, I could not see out of the outcropping. It was like the outcrop of trees where I was surrounded by a huge black box. I could see the last tree and ground until one point, where there was just blackness. It was like a black wall. Then suddenly, I saw the wall start moving towards me. I didn't care that this was the wrong path, I just wanted to get away from that wall. So I ran further into the outcrop of trees. After a couple minutes, I stopped to check behind and saw that the wall or whatever it was was not there anymore. Relieved, I turned back and completely froze. Standing right in front of me, right in my face, was some sort of creature. It was like a human, but its limbs were twisted out of shape, I thought. Then he cut off and very quietly said, it's knocking. Now the weird thing was, his voice wasn't shaking as if he were not scared. In fact, it sounded as if he was talking with someone in a library, just trying to be quiet. This quiet lasted for about 20 minutes, he wasn't talking, and all I could hear from my end was his breathing, at least I hope it was his, and a faint knocking. Then, after 20 minutes, right as the clock switched to 5.30 am, I heard one last faint knock, and then it stopped. He finally started whispering to me again. I heard it walk away, I think it's gone. Then he started explaining the story again. Where was I up to? I told him that he had gotten up to explaining the creature. Oh yeah, that's right. Basically, this thing stood there looking at me. And I saw its limbs and think I saw some sort of light coming from where the eyes should be, but I didn't stay much longer as the creature suddenly started moving its arm towards me. I legged it out of there. I didn't care if there was a wall in the way or anything, I would keep running no matter what. So I kept running until I hit the main path, where I sprinted to my campsite. As soon as I got to my campsite, I was relieved to see another tent there with a campfire and two people sitting around it. They called me over and asked if I had seen anything on my way as they had seen something that looked like a human running through a tree line. I had told them about what I had experienced, and they said that letting the campfire die out would be a bad idea. We decided to guard the campfire in shifts for the rest of the night. I didn't even go out to the stream to get water, as I was too scared to leave the safety of the campfire. I asked if I could borrow a bottle of theirs. The rest of the night, thankfully, went uneventfully. We thought it would be wiser if we walked in a group back to somewhere where it was civilized. The next couple of days were also, thankfully, uneventful while we made our way back to civilization. Right before we parted, we exchanged some contact details. And finally, I went home. The knocking started a couple of days ago, and I do not know what to do. I am telling you this so you know what happened to me if something happened. And I was hoping you maybe had some information or tips I could use. To this end, I straight away started suggesting ideas. I told him about sprinkling salt everywhere, 
he was skeptical but said he would do it in the morning. I grew up on Long Island, in New York State. My older sister, her boyfriend, and I would often walk the trails and the beaches at night. On one particular evening, the three of us were on a walk at Camp Hero State Park. It was a full moon, so it was very bright out. As we were walking the trail, we stopped to relax and look out over the water. My sister's boyfriend sparked up a joint, and we were all partaking and relaxing. While we were gazing out onto the open water, we spotted a small light in the distance. My sister inquired as to what we thought that was, and her boyfriend said it was probably a light on a distant boat. I agreed, and we didn't think much of it. However, as moments passed, we noticed the light seemed to be approaching us, getting closer by the minute. As it moved closer, it appeared to not be on the water but above the water in the sky. We soon realized it was not a light on a distant boat. We continued to speculate as to what it was, and I came to the conclusion that it must be someone's small personal drone. But as the light came closer and closer, the brightness got stronger and stronger. If you know Camp Hero, you know that there are cliff edges that hang over the water. There we are, standing there on the edge, with this orb steadily approaching us. Within the span of five minutes, the orb was no longer in the distance but hanging right in front of us, it was no longer over the water but rather over the sandy beach. We stood there, staring at it. It had a whitish purple glow to it. Despite being night, it was bright due to the light of the full moon. On this high visibility evening, it became evident that this was no drone, this light was standalone, with no machinery of any kind attached to it. And it just hung there, about 10 feet in front of us, for about 30 seconds. It then just disappeared, in such a way that it almost seemed to envelope itself. We all decided to get the hell out of there. And that was that. I was walking up Kakepiku Mountain, which I had done a few times before. It was very early on a summer weekday morning, maybe around 5.30 or 6, and there were no other cars in the car park when I arrived. I had gotten to the bit before the final stair climbed to the top. You pop up at the top of a small rise, and there's a bench to admire the view before you carry on. The next part is through a bit of bush, and then, from memory, you reach the steps. As I reached the top of the bench, I felt the most terrifying feeling of dread come over me. It was instant, there was no warning whatsoever. It literally stopped me in my tracks. I stood dead still, and I scanned the track in front and didn't see anything untoward. It was silent, and I could only hear my heart thumping. I stayed where I was for a few seconds, and the feeling didn't subside. It was horrifying. It was not like anything I had ever felt before. I was frozen in fear, and I had no idea why. I turned around and started literally running and scrambling back down the way I came. I didn't stop for a single second until I reached the bottom. There were still no cars in the parking lot when I got back, and I just ducking floored it out of there. I have absolutely no idea what happened, and it was about three years ago, and I swear I will never set foot there again. During my childhood, I grew up northwest of NYC, in an area near the Delaware River. I lived next door to my best friend, let's call him Jack. Being the same age, we spent every day of the summer hanging out, exploring the woods, mountains, rivers, and lakes around our homes. We would take off in the morning on our bikes and come home around dinner time. We would spend pretty much every day in the woods, exploring, hiking, biking, fishing, and climbing. We had been doing this for years and were pretty familiar with our surroundings. One day, we rode our bikes on some trails that we had been on countless times before. We decided to take a break in an area that we had never stopped at before. The resting spot was flanked by a ridge covered with heavy brush to our left and a steep embankment to our right. We had never ventured over the ridge before, so we decided we'd climb it to see what was on the other side. The ridge itself wasn't really all that tall, probably about 150 feet. However, it was covered in heavy brush, and that made it a bit difficult to climb. When we made it to the top, we continued our way forward until we came upon a lake. It wasn't a terribly large lake, you could easily see the other side and could swim it without much issue. We walked around the lake a bit until we came to a dock. This seemed pretty strange and out of place, however, we assumed we stumbled upon someone's land. We were young teenagers and weren't hurting anything, so we found it cool, and we hung out for a bit on the dock. After about 10 minutes of shooting the shit and joking around, we decided to explore the area a bit more and found a small metal row boat tucked away in the brush. Excited by our luck, we decided to take the row boat out on the lake for a little bit. Once we got into the water, we rowed about 20 feet out into the lake, and that's when things started to feel very strange. I got a very uncomfortable feeling, a very visceral fear that seemed unprovoked by anything external. It can only be described as the common feeling of being watched, but by someone with evil, sinister intentions. 
At the exact moment when I was hit by the fear, I looked to Jack and saw the same uncomfortable, fearful look in his eyes. We had spent countless days and hours in these woods. We had come across bears and coyotes, never once before did I have this feeling or see that look in Jack's eyes. Without saying a word, we started to row the boat back to the dock. I felt incredibly anxious and just wanted to be off the boat immediately, gone from the area and on my way back home. Once we reached the dock, which felt like an eternity, we jumped out of the boat and began quickly pulling it out of the water. Just as we were doing this, we heard a very loud bang hit a metal trash can right behind us. We looked at each other, completely frozen and terrified, and ripped the boat out of the water. We ran the boat back to where we found it, dropped it, and took off, sprinting in the direction we came over the ridge. We practically fell our way down the ridge, getting caught up in brush, bumps, and bruises all over. We found our bikes and took off back down the trail. To this day, Jack and I still remember that moment of terror. There is and was no reasonable explanation for why we were both overcome by such fear at the exact same moment. We didn't see or hear anyone around us that day, and we never ventured back to the lake to investigate again. So, I used to work in a factory on the third shift. 12 hours every night, you'd rely on your partner at work to talk SHT all night to get you through the shift. I always enjoyed teaming up with this particular dude because we both hold conversations well and always have some interesting stuff to say. Anyway, I'm like 27 at the time, and he's in his 50s. I figured he'd have a crazy story or two, so I asked him about paranormal shit if he'd experienced anything. He tells me this unbelievable story. His story. There's a town in Ohio that's very old. Very wild. Forests, not much around there except a farm or two. He claims that each time he went out there, he would notice his watch would malfunction or his compass would act weird, and he'd have missing time and things of that nature. So he and his buddy were out there hunting in this forest. They hunt all day, I don't think they killed anything, but they decided to leave. They're hiking back when a dude, about 30 years old, approaches them on a dirt road on a tractor. Clearly a farmer type guy. He questions my co-worker and friend and tells them they're hunting on his property. They apologize and strike up a conversation, and the farmer man takes a liking to them. He tells them that next time they're out there, if they should get approached or have any issues, just mention his name, and they'll be okay. Well, two or so years go by, and they get together again to go hunting on this property. A similar thing happens when a young man on a riding mower or tractor approaches them and they realize this is a different guy. They tell the young man that they have permission to be there from the owner, a farmer from before. He proceeds to tell me that the young man they were speaking to gave him a strange look. The man says, you're telling me my farmer man told you guys a couple years ago you could hunt out here? They said yes and described the prior interaction. The young man looks puzzled and tells them to follow him back to this old farmhouse. They go inside, and there's a very old man on a hospital-type bed in the living room, watching TV and hooked up to oxygen. The young man says, Dad, these men claim you talked to them a couple years ago and gave them permission to hunt. The old man looks at my co-worker and his friend in bewilderment and says, I remember you too, you haven't aged a day. It creeped them out, obviously. Anyway, I guess they talked for a while, then left and never went back there. I was a 12-year-old girl growing up in the 1970s when we purchased 11 acres in the Sierra foothills, where we intended on building our house. In the meantime, the five of us lived in a trailer on our land. My younger brother and I would spend a lot of our time outdoors during the day, exploring our small acreage and the trees and meadows beyond our property line. I would go on a lot of adventures all alone, exploring small caves and creeks, river walking, and climbing hills. On one such adventure, I followed a gravel road up the hill. There was only one home I knew of at the very top, and that was my friend Kathy's. I would go up that gravel road, but not always to visit her. It was to take side trails and explore on my own. On one spring afternoon, I decided to go again, up the gravel road. I'm not always as aware of my surroundings as I should be, so I was not alarmed when I noticed a chained-off area to my left. But still, how had I never noticed this area before? Oh, well, I thought. I decided to climb over the chain and see what was back in there. As I hiked back in through an animal trail, it slowly opened up and became very green. The grass at my feet seems like all new grass, all wild growth, all natural. To my right was an old wagon that looked ancient, like it had been there for a hundred years. There was growth all around it. Covering it. As I kept walking, nature became more and more vibrant. The sky was so blue. The birds made charming tweets. There were wildflowers galore, purple, red, and yellow. I had not seen any. An amazing array of flowers. Nothing was groomed. All the wild, 
Colorful growth is all around me. Not a human or a house in sight. I sat in the flowers and grass for a long time, just looked up, and enjoyed my surroundings for about an hour. Well, I decided I had better get back before the sun went down. I didn't want my mom to worry. I'll come back here again tomorrow. I can't remember if I went right back. It may have been a few weeks later when I tried. I went up the gravel road again and again, looking for the chain to my left. I looked for that little opening to that beautiful place, but I never was able to find it again. It was the most beautiful place I had ever been, and it was a half mile from my house. It was simple enough to find the first time, but I could never find it again. It was as if it never existed, and it was all a dream. I wish I had stayed a little bit longer. So, this is not a personal experience of mine. However, a close friend's mother, who lives in the Greendale, Wisconsin area, was relating a story to me tonight that just ping cryptid on my brain. About three weeks ago, she let her two dogs out into the backyard. Those familiar with the area know that Greendale is just a bit outside of Milwaukee, and those of you who don't now do. Her backyard is connected to a wooded area, so she's used to random wildlife. Deer come by frequently, and bears have been known to wander around from time to time, not to mention the countless smaller woodland creatures. This being said, she recently, see above timeline, had a fairly disconcerting situation unfold. One night, not too long ago, she let her two dogs out to do boom boom before bed, a nightly occurrence, and she stayed with them as she often did. She would regularly sit on her patio until midnight or later, not so anymore. As I said, she's used to seeing occasional wildlife, as are the dogs. This particular night, she let the dogs out, and they started to make for the yard, however, they stopped just past the patio and stared into the darkness of the trees. Unwilling to move further, she left her back door to try and coax them to hurry up and do their business. As she approached the edge of her patio, talking to the dogs as she made her way, she noticed a particularly rancid smell. It smelled like mothballs, rotting meat, and dead fish. You know how the lake smells when the thaw comes. Shortly after, she heard a loud grunt and the rustling of foliage. She was very clear that the smell was no animal she had smelled before, and the grunt did not sound like that of a bear, even though one had been spotted in another area not super far from her place. Two, in fact, had been spotted. One had wandered onto the interstate and been struck by a truck. It was enough to shake her, and she doesn't spook easily. Now, that would have been weird enough for her. However, the next day she let her dogs out, a bit earlier, and one had traveled a bit further into the foliage before she called her back, heading in the same direction as they had been staring the night before. She called her back, and she came. But it was off for her to have traveled that far. The next day, during daylight, she decided to trek in a bit and see if she could find any bear signs or anything like that. She didn't. What she did find was three, three, squirrels, dead, lined up. Not end to end, but one, then the next, like lined paper, and spaced out evenly. The squirrels weren't as bloody or mutilated as one would expect from a predator attacking and snacking. Just dead and laid out evenly. Now, I dunno what kind of cryptid has this kind of mo, but it didn't sound like anything I had heard of a normal animal doing. Anyone have any insight into this weird thing happening? I was spending the night at my grandparents' house, and it was dark out. They live in the middle of nowhere, in an area surrounded by forest. It was about 11.30. I was watching TV, and I heard a thump at the door. It was storming outside, so I figured it was just the weather. Then I hear some sort of bellow, kind of like a deer. I get up and see a massive creature that I initially thought was a bear, but it wasn't a bear. The head looked like that of a camel. This thing had big, old claws that looked downright terrifying. It was dark brown in color. It had a long, kangaroo-like tail. We met eye to eye before it galloped back into the woods, almost like a gorilla. When I got up to look at this thing, I was expecting either a deer or some formidable beast, but it was like nothing I'd never seen before. It was kind of cute. It didn't look like it could hurt anyone despite its claws. I told my pops about it in the morning, admitted he's seen some things in these woods, and said his papa warned him and his siblings about strange animals when he was young. I've been trying to figure out what it could have been, but without any answers. This was in Maine. I live in New Zealand, and I regularly trap possums in a patch of forest next to a rather old cemetery. The area surrounding my trap line is full of poverty, drug abuse, and violence. I'm very experienced in the bush and can tell the difference between animals judging from their tracks and calls. Okay, so my dog has been terrified of the area for the past three weeks. Usually he follows me everywhere, but he's been refusing to cross into the forestry block next to the cemetery. Every time I've managed to get him into the trees, 
He gets spooked and runs home. He's never had a problem here before, but lately he refuses to go near the place. Now for the actual event. I was checking my traps by myself without my dog around 9.30 pm last night. It was incredibly quiet, which is strange because usually you would hear possums moving around, animal calls, etc. I got through my trap line without any incident. To exit the forestry block, you have to cross over a fence bordering the cemetery. As I approached the fence, I heard a quick, deep grunt. I passed it off as a tree moving or an animal or something and didn't take any notice. While climbing over the fence, I heard another slightly longer, more guttural growl. It was low in pitch and sounded somewhere in between a dog and a human growl, but much deeper and hoarse. Understandably, this scared the shit out of me, and I jumped the fence and began scanning the trees with my spotlight to try to catch some eye shine or something. I heard the growl one last time, but right next to the fence, and at that point, I just noped out of the area. I'm sharing this here because I'm not sure what to make of it. I'm experienced in identifying animals, and I know the area well. I've never experienced anything like this. The only animals in the area, apart from birds, are possums and possibly wild pigs. I'm familiar with the noises both of these animals make, and neither of them could produce a noise like it. I'm going to return to the area tonight with my gun and search for tracks and animal signs to try to make sense of this. I am interested in hearing what people make of this. So today I noticed something strange when I was in the woods. I like to go mountain biking alone and particularly enjoy the woods near my house. There is a pre-built track designed for bikes, and it can get pretty busy on the weekend, so I like to go out during the weekday when everyone is at work. Today, as I was cycling down the path, I stopped to catch my breath. The first thing I noticed was how quiet it was. Even though I was in a forest, it wasn't far from the main roads. Normally I can hear the rolling tires, but today it seemed a lot more stifled. I was wearing cheap noise-canceling headphones. It was then that I noticed something strange. About 20 meters ahead of me, I saw a birch tree, and next to it was a sort of distortion. The best way to describe it would be like that wobbly effect heat gives off. However, there was no fire, smoke, or anything out of the ordinary other than the air, which seemed to be simmering. I stared at the distortion for a while, and it started to give me a slight headache. Intrigued, I cycled over to it. Upon arriving, the distortion vanished. I got off my bike and touched the side of the birch tree. Nothing strange happened, and it felt like a normal tree. There was nothing on the ground other than leaves and sticks. Confused, I continued my cycle, although now I felt more drained and my headache remained. I have always felt a strangeness in nature. A power that I can't comprehend. I wonder if this has anything to do with it. I will go back out later in the week and see if I can't see another ripple. My wife, daughter, and I went camping over the holiday weekend. We both took off work Friday and headed off to meet up with a group of friends who were camping with their kids and dogs for the holiday weekend. They were already out there and had found a nice campsite that was big enough for our group. Just a spot off of a service road with a primitive fire pit and not an official campground. In total, there were 10 of us, 7 adults and 3 tweens. We were camping out in an area south of Mount Rainier, just outside of the park boundary, off of a road that would lead you to a locked gate that enters the park. We knew at the end of the road there was a locked gate because all the cars that went that way had to flip back around because it was only accessible to National Park staff. We set up our camp in a flat area that would fit our two tents that they had raked up for us prior to our arrival, it was a bit closer to the road than their tents were. They had set up their tents much further back. Once camp was up, we hung out with our friends while the kids played and had dinner around the fire. Just friends hanging out and having drinks hanging around the fire, and all was great. We stayed up pretty late, and everyone was getting tired and cold. Slowly, everyone faded off to their tents and to bed. My wife was cold and went to warm up in the car, then proceeded to fall asleep in the car. Now my daughter and I are the last two awakened by the fire, and she decided that she wanted to sleep in the car where it was warm with my wife. I agreed that was okay after I attempted to wake my wife up and get her to come to the tent to go to sleep, and she was out cold. So I watched her go to her tent and grab her blanket and her sleeping bag for my wife, as it was cold and I had turned the car off now. She grabbed the stuff, zipped up the tent, and off to the car she went. I myself stayed up a little bit longer by the fire and must have dozed off momentarily because when I woke back up, I was sitting in a camping chair with only glowing embers, and it was pitch black. Only the coals of the fire were glowing red in the now dead fire. I got up and found my way to the tent in the pitch blackness of the night, climbed in, and went to sleep. I was exhausted and fell asleep as soon as I got in that sleeping bag. Around 3.30 am I woke up to my daughter's tent kind of rustling and what sounded like two female voices talking really softly. I listened intently, trying to hear what they were saying, 
but I couldn't really understand anything. There were no real discernible words coming out, they were just mumbling. Then silence. I figured it was just my wife and daughter finding their way to my daughter's tent, not wanting to wake me up by being loud. I figured my wife was just going to sleep in the tent with my daughter. However, now I am up because my back is killing me because the air mattress is now flat and airless. As I lay there in what I can only describe as dead silence, I heard cracking like sticks breaking or popping, so I assumed the fire was still hanging on somehow. Then I hear something moving around towards the front of my tent, and it stops. Something is directly outside the front of my tent, I can feel it and sense it. So I slowly raise myself up to a seated position and hear something. I breathe in and exhale a large breath. This is the heaviest breath I have ever heard, and it was followed by what I can only describe as a very loud huff as if from a horse, cow, or some very large animal. I sat there frozen with fear, trying to rationalize what it was I was hearing, and it stopped. All I heard was the one deep inhale and exhale and that huff sound, then everything went silent. What followed next was an owl hooting a little ways off back from behind the area of our friend's tents, and after that, I heard nothing else. No sounds at all, no fire popping or sticks cracking, nothing. I stayed there, sitting up frozen with fear for what seemed like forever, until I could tell the sun was coming up and that it was light out now. I mustered up the courage to go outside and check the ground in front of my tent, and that's when I noticed my daughter's tent unzipped and empty. I panic and rush to the car, and there they are in the car, sound asleep? I see not a single track around our tents, and everyone else is about 20 to 30 yards away in their tents. Now I am freaking the hell out. Who did I hear talking? Who was skulking around the tent? What the hell was that breathing in front of me and huffing outside my tent? What opened my daughter's tent zipper? Surely there is an explanation, and I sit out there for at least an hour getting the fire going as our friends begin to get up and move about. They slowly make their way to the fire, and I immediately start asking them, where were the dogs all night? Did you let them out where they were sniffing around my tent? Did any of you wake up and start talking or moving around, and did you hear that owl? Nope, no, and no, they all replied. I have no idea what was talking softly and what was breathing and huffing right in front of me. What the hell opened my daughter's tent in the night? I watched her zip it shut and go to the car. That breath and huff were so scary, it left me frozen with fear, and I didn't move at all after hearing it and sat there as silently as possible, not even wanting to breathe. One of the scariest moments of my life was something large and unknown in the darkness directly in front of me, and the only thing separating us was a thin tent wall. This all happened Friday into Saturday morning, and we still have another night here. I decided that I am not sleeping in the tents, and neither are my wife and daughter tonight or ever again. The rest of the day goes great, hanging out, having breakfast, going into town, Ashford, and going for a hike down the road to the lake, Cora Lake. Basically, just camping and hanging. It's getting later now, and although the sun is out and there are blue skies, the canopy in our camping area is thick, and even at the brightest point in the day, it was still pretty dark compared to the road area. As we are hanging out, we hear woo whoops way off in the distance, and we are thinking, what is that? More time passes, and now a few of the people who were there when we arrived at camp have left. Just seven of us left, and two of the seven were pretty much always in their tent. So that left five of us hanging out by the fire. That's when dusk crept in, and my buddy began working on dinner for all of us. As we sat there from off in the woods between us and the park boundary towards the creek, we heard these blood-curdling screams and wood-type howls that everyone heard. We all stopped talking and fell silent, and we all began to ask each other what that was. We heard this about four to five times. It sounded like a woman being murdered, and what type of sound? Then came a few tree knocks from the same general direction. Is someone messing with us out here, as everyone was thinking? Keep in mind that it is a holiday weekend, so there are tons of campers within a 15 mile radius. So I called my buddy over, and he hadn't heard the screams because he had been cooking on a skillet and had a propane lantern in front of him and behind him, and they were loud. We stand there and listen, but we don't hear it. We decide, okay, we will do a tree knockback closer to the road that divided us from the area we heard these vocalizations and knocks from. That is when we heard it. I got a chill down my spine, and the hairs raised up on my arms and neck. We both looked at one another and, at the same time, asked, did you ducking hear that? I asked him what he heard, and we had both heard what we can only describe as a monkey or gorilla sound, like you would hear on the Discovery Channel or something. It was like, oh, ooh, ah, 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 ah sound. It was far off, but deep and rumbling, unlike what you hear on TV. I want to say it was directed at us. I only say that because the other people were sitting behind us, maybe only 10 feet away, and they didn't hear it, only us. Now we are freaking the hell out, and nobody is sleeping in their tents. 
we don't want to say anything and freak everyone else out because, at this point, they are already on edge. I have been hiking and camping here in the PNW for almost 20 years now and have never experienced this while camping out with family and friends. I am 39 years old, from the East Coast, and have been shot at and chased growing up in the ghetto. I am a former US Army infantryman who has spent countless nights in only a sleeping bag, in a dugout sleeping hole, and in tents. I am now afraid to ever sleep in a tent again after this weekend. I have never really felt fear like I did that first night in all my time in the forests out here, except when I was a kid in the woods back home. I once went to sleep in my bivy off the trail, next to some dense undergrowth. I woke up in the early morning hours to notice two luminous red spots off to my side. Once my eyes came to focus, I stared at them for a few minutes to try to think about what they might be and to convince myself that there was surely nothing to be alarmed about. After all, I was several hundred miles into my northbound hike. I don't believe in ghosts and couldn't think of any earthly animal that would have glowing red eyes that would be this interested in me. Stay calm. I assumed the red light might be just physical side effects of sleep or trying to see in near total darkness, bands of color or after images. It was impossible to say how far away the red lights were since it was exceedingly dark under the trees on a moonless night. I waved my hand in front of my eyes, and the glowing spots disappeared behind my hand, telling me this wasn't some optical illusion. This went on for at least an hour, maybe two, which thoroughly rattled me. I decided not to get up and find another place to camp. If this was something interested in stalking me, I wanted to keep a steady eye on it rather than appear to flee or turn my back on it. Nothing ever came of it. After that long, sleepless night, I later tried to research what could have been watching me with unblinking red, forward-facing eyes that glowed in the dark. I never got a satisfactory answer and never saw anything like that again. When I was much younger, growing up in bum duck nowhere, Russia, my cousin and I went on what was to be a three-day camping slash canoe trip. We were about 14 at the time. We were driven off trail for quite a while and dropped off by family near a medium-sized lake, nothing huge or noteworthy, we mostly planned to paddle around and then camp on one of the shores. After the first day, closer to the afternoon, we paddled towards a peninsula maybe 200 to 300 meters across and 400 to 500 meters long, went inlands through the forest a bit, cleaned up a small clearing a bit to start a fire, laid out our tarps, and relaxed. We were in the middle of the forest, but not one that was thick, we could still barely see through to the water in the distance, it was patchy in places, on a small peninsula not connected by roads, quite far from civilization, with no bleeding light into the sky and lots of sounds of forest creatures and animals nearby. The shore itself was no more than 100 meters away, and there was a 2 meter drop from the edge of the land to the water, a bit like a small sandy cliff. The incline of the cliff, and about a meter in towards land, was covered with overgrown bushes, brambles, and the like, making it unsuitable for walking through save for a single spot we found resembling a trail along the shore. At about 11 p.m., at a brief lull in the conversation, we noticed that the forest had gone completely still, with no sound at all save for the crackling of the fire. It almost felt muted in a sense, like the sound was being muffled or bearing down on us, which was very strange and made us feel unsettled. Up until that point, even though we were laughing and talking quite loudly, we could still hear the sounds of wildlife and insects whenever the talking wound down. Then my cousin noticed something and pointed in the direction of the shore. I turned around, and we both stood up and observed a pair of lights, like flash lights but with more focused beams, moving from quite a distance away and scanning about on the shore and water. We estimated they were about on the water, but it was strange because it was coming from a section of the water we deemed impassable during daylight. The lake past that point was very thick and overgrown with reeds, too thick to swim, canoe, or pilot even a motor-powered boat through but still quite deep and not at all possible to wade or walk through. And yet we could see two powerful flash light beams, lightly bobbing as if being carried, making their way across the surface of the water, they panned as if scanning in our direction, then began coming towards the shore. We froze up completely, in a state of panic. We had not seen or heard a single living soul out on the water with us or nearby in the woods the whole day, we had not heard splashing of water or motor from any possible boat, and besides, it would have been impossible there. The lights reached the shore and phased at a constant motion impossible for a human to be carrying it up the two-meter incline, as if someone had been walking on the water, and without getting off, a boat materialized through the slope and through all the brambles, vegetation, and the like that should have hindered anyone carrying it. By this point, they were cutting through the trees, and the light was shining pretty much on top of us in our camp. And it started bearing down in our direction slowly, getting closer. We freaked out and began screaming, shouting, throwing rocks, and whatever else we could find in their direction, yelling obscenities, about 50 meters from us. 
When the beams of light were illuminating us well and brightly, they both went out completely, and after a few more minutes of stillness, we started to hear insects again, and the muffling sensation disappeared. We spent the rest of the night scared shless, pacing, keeping the fire high, looking out in all directions, not that we could see much, and calling out into the night. When dawn broke, we finally mustered up enough courage to go towards the shore and take a closer look. We found no footsteps in the mud save our own, we found nothing to indicate anyone or anything clambering up the cliff or disturbing the brambles, bushes, or vegetation in any way. We confirmed our belief that the reed waters could not be swam, walked, or boated in any way. We quickly packed our things, broke camp, paddled back to where we were dropped off, and camped out there for two more nights until we were picked up. After that night and a brief check in the morning, we did not talk about what we experienced, most of the rest of the trip was spent in a bit of a daze. We did not tell our families either, and we did not talk about it again until years later. When going over it, we both found that each other's versions matched up clearly, there was nothing we remembered at all that was different. We are not sure how to explain it. I later heard about this phenomenon called the Will of the Wisps, but I do not believe this to be the case here. The region was not known for the Will of the Wisps, they had not been reported there previously. The lights shone far too brightly, with a yellow-white light, like beams deriving from a point and shining outwards toward us. When they appeared, they moved on the water and scanned the lake and shore as if searching, then made their way steadily towards us, bobbing as if being carried in the hands of a man walking carelessly, and there was no wind as it was still night. The overbearing muffling sensation, like having your head underwater, and the stillness of the forest were strange too. Has anyone ever experienced anything like this? I am ready to accept that this is just some phenomenon, like the will of the wisps. One time, I was out hunting with my younger brother and our father. They go off one way, and me and the dog go off on the other. An hour or so later, I get a call on the radio from my father saying my brother has just shot a deer and they're tacking it, telling me to get the truck and drive it toward where they're tracking it so we can load it up and don't have to drag it for several miles. I park the truck, start walking toward where they radioed they were, and suddenly I hear a loud scream and then half a dozen shots in quick succession. I bolt to where they are, and my brother is on the ground, covered in blood, backing away from where my father is standing. Dad is standing over the deer with his 45 smoking and pointed at it. The head is unrecognizable, blown to bits. I asked what happened. Brother is in shock and can't speak. Dad says that they found the deer still alive but unable to move and dying. Brother shot it once more in the heart so that he could mount the head. He slit its throat and strung it up to drain the blood from it while I got the truck. They had heard me coming and were just taking it down after draining it for a while, about 40 minutes after they strung it up. When my brother was sitting it down, the deer picked up its head and belted a loud scream at him, which was the scream I heard. Brother fell backwards and scrambled away as dad immediately drew his revolver and put six rounds into its head. We spent about 10 minutes just calming down and collecting ourselves. I wrote it off as the deer not having been as dead as they thought, and that must have been its last death throw. All's well, sometimes that stuff happens. It's a good story to tell when we get back. That wasn't the freaky part. We load the now practically headless deer into the truck and drive back to camp. Brother is still shaking, and dad is quiet. I tell them I'll dress the deer while they make dinner and a fire. They get out of the truck and head straight into camp. I go around back, drop the tailgate, and the dead deer, whose head is now just pulp, stands up in the truck bed. I'm staring at the stump of its neck as I back up, and it climbs down in front of me and slowly starts approaching me. My dog, who we had a tendency to joke was a hellhound because of his habit of breaking stuff he shouldn't be able to, slams into this deer and throws it a few yards. As it's getting up again, I grab my shotgun and put every ounce of buckshot I had loaded into the thing. It finally stopped moving, and I turn and see my father and brother standing there horrified, having run over when they heard my dog roar and having seen it stand up a second time. We quickly dug a small pit, threw whatever was impersonating a deer into it, dumped a can of gasoline on it, and kept our guns trained on the pit until the fire died away and there was only ash left in the pit. We packed up, left, drove five hours home, and went to sleep. None of us had said a word since I had offered to dress that thing, and we didn't say anything until lunch the next day. We still haven't ever acknowledged what happened, and we all pretend that trip never happened with each other. Tonight I was out predator hunting in East Texas and calling with rabbit distress noises when, around last light, a smaller doe walked out into the pipeline to my right. She was eating the grass until she stopped at the corner of the pipeline and the opening of the field. She appeared startled, looking into the tree line about five feet from her. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a terrifying scream coming from the doe as she began jumping and stomping in place. 
This scream was unlike anything I had ever heard and wasn't a cat or coyote, which is about all we have down here. It was high pitched and almost like a bird, but it was definitely coming from the deer. After a few seconds, she sat there looking before getting spooked again and again, screaming loudly, and booking it out of the pipeline and into the woods. Does anyone know what the scream could represent? Obviously something spooked her, and I'm leaning towards the coyote since that is what I was calling for, but why would she turn and stomp a coyote instead of running? My only idea is that maybe she had a fawn around whom she was protecting, but also why would she run away after? Any ideas or information on these screams would be appreciated. When I was 11 years old. Back in the 80s, my parents bought a camping trailer, and every summer, my family, mom, dad, and two brothers, would go camping. Often, a few of my cousins and aunts would also tag along. Sometimes it would be a weekend trip, and other times we would stay for a week at a time. Most camping trips were up in New Hampshire. It was so much fun, and for most of my childhood, nothing really crazy happened at all. One morning, I woke up and noticed my cousin or best friend was sleeping in the same bunk as me. I didn't think much about it, but as I pushed her to let her know I was getting up, she said, are you really awake this time? I said yes to her strange question and went to the front of the camper to get a drink. My mom and aunt were sitting outside the camper having coffee. When I went out to say good morning, they said, come talk to us. I walked outside and could tell my mom looked upset, like she had been crying. My aunt was a bit shaky as she asked, do you remember what happened last night? I shook my head no and listened as my aunt told me about the extremely strange night, which I did not recall whatsoever. My aunt explained that at about 2 a.m., she woke up to the door of the camper being wide open. She quickly checked the bunks and noticed that I was nowhere to be found. She woke up my mom and dad, and then my mom and dad got flashlights and started frantically searching for me outside in the immediate area. My aunt stayed behind because there were still four kids sleeping in the camper. After a scary 10-minute search, my dad spotted me. I had walked out of the camper and into the trees, about 30 feet away. It was far enough that I could not be seen unless he walked into the trees a bit. I was just standing out there in the dark, with my eyes completely open, but not responding to him at all. I had no shoes, no flashlight, and was wearing just shorts and a t-shirt. He said that he grabbed my hand and started walking me back to the camp. He remembers asking me, what's going on? Why in the world would you go out on your own like that? Then, I finally spoke up, saying, I need to wait here, dad. Let's just stay here. My mom remembers that I then started crying as she and my dad led me back to the camper. Whenever I think back to this story, I get a sick or strange feeling. Thank God my aunt woke up when she did. It's important to note that I've never been known to sleepwalk before or after that night. It was an isolated incident, which could have had a very different ending had I not been so lucky. My mom was so upset that she decided to get rid of the trailer, and we didn't do much camping after that night. Over Easter break in 2006, three friends and I went camping up near Sugar Pine Reservoir in California. There was still a ton of snow on the ground, and the gates to the campsites at the lake were still locked, so we chose to go up the road away and turn down a random logging road and continued on that until we found a good pullout. The road split and made a small loop, and there was a clearing that other people had been in fairly recently, judging by the shot shells and trash we found. It looked decent, though, so we set up camp. It was a very cold sleet or rain for the duration of our time there, and it was maybe a high of 40 degrees during the day, not high enough for all the snow to melt, even with a constant drizzle. My friends were Mike, Jay, and Jay's girlfriend, Carrie. The general layout was a big triangle. Jay and Carrie's tent at the top of the triangle, and paths from their tent to the tent I shared with Mike, we set up on the road next to my truck, and to an easy up that we set up and back Jay's truck to so we could use the tailgate as a cooking table. We didn't walk around inside this triangle just because we didn't need to. It was miserably cold and wet, and as the first evening wore on, the wind picked up, so the four of us sat in the easy until fairly late, just playing cards and drinking hot chocolate until we finally decided to call it a night. We weren't drinking or doing drugs, crazy, high school seniors not doing that stuff, mostly because Jay and Carrie were very religious. Carrie was actually studying at a Pentecostal college in Stockton, I think, at the time. Mike's tent was big, and I had brought cots so we could sleep off the ground. Those came in super handy when we found out how badly the tent leaked, there was a good inch of standing water with ice forming in the tent. After an hour or two, I started hearing noises outside. I've camped or fished in that area since I was a toddler and was well aware of bears, mountain lions, and most of the other animals in the area. I tried to figure out what was out there, and I realized it wasn't animals. There was whispering and talking in the woods around our campsite. I hadn't heard a vehicle, 
nor did I hear any crunching in the snow or on the exposed part of the road. I sat in building fear for 15 or 20 minutes listening to these voices, I couldn't make out what was being said, it was muffled, but they were male voices in the woods, near and far. I would hear something near where Jay's truck was, then a response from near the road, etc. I was freaked out. Mike and I had our cots head to head, and at the same moment I reached to wake him up, he reached to wake me up, I had long hair at the time, he actually yanked my hair, thinking he'd wake me up. We faced each other, and the conversation was quick. You hear that? Those are voices, right? Like, someone is at our campsite. Yeah dude. Let's check it out. Of all the friends I have, Mike and Jay were two that I would take to a fight any day of the week. At the time, Jay had black belts in at least one discipline, and his dad owned a martial arts studio, not to mention that he was an animal in the gym and on the football field. Mike had wrestled varsity for four years and played football as well. Whoever was looking to mess with us was about to have a bad night. Mike and I moved very slowly to put on boots and moved to the door of the tent so we wouldn't make any noise before we were out and able to maneuver. We each took a flashlight, I had an A.G. Russell hunting knife, and he had a cookery that we used for miscellaneous chopping needs. We counted one, two, three and unzipped the door of the tent and exploded into the darkness, lights piercing into the woods and scanning the site, and there was nothing. It wasn't a full moon, but there was enough light for us to see in the clearings pretty well, and we moved up and down the road a bit, calling into the dark. Who's out there? Where are you? Hey, we can hear you. What do you want? Stop ducking with us. Where are you at? But there were no replies. Just silence. We walked around for a good 10 minutes, at this point, much more scared than we'd been before leaving the tent. We clicked off the flashlights and hid in the shadows of trees near our tent, hoping that if we got quiet, the whispers would start again and we could find who was doing it, but we were met with silence. Carrie finally called out from their tent. Hey! I heard that too, guys. The voices are in the woods. It wasn't me and Jay. We talked briefly with Jay and Carrie, Jay hadn't heard a thing, but Carrie said she'd been awake for hours listening to them. We went back to our tent but kept our boots on and lay with lights and knives in hand for a cold, sleepless night. After dawn, we got up and went to the Easy Up, where Carrie started breakfast. The three of us dudes were drinking coffee, and Carrie went to dump something outside and almost immediately started yelling for all of us. We run out of the easy up, and she points to the middle of that triangle, the one formed by our paths, the one that we didn't walk in the middle of, right at a footprint. We walked out to look at it, and sure enough, a good 10 feet from the paths we'd created was a single footprint. A human footprint with five toes and a good arch. And there was nothing else around it. The print was only an inch or two deep in the snow, and the day before had been a drizzle all day. That footprint would have been washed away by the rain had it been there before we got there. We were properly freaked out we destroyed the print for peace of mind. The better part of that day was spent hiking, making a couple loops, about 200 and 500 meters, around our site, and traveling up and down the road. We found no fresh tire tracks, no fresh footprints, no snowshoe tracks, no nothing. None of us had any idea what was in the woods with us that night. That evening, Carrie and Jay left, Carrie's dad found out she wasn't at school where she was supposed to be, he was very opposed to her dating, like I said, Pentecostal. Mike and I tried to sleep in the cab of my truck, but it was more of us sitting awake with the keys in the ignition, doing a check every time one of us got scared to make sure that the truck would still start. At light the next morning, we bounced, and I haven't been up that road since. To see the general area, I couldn't pinpoint our exact site, pull up Sugar Pine Reservoir, California, and look a little northwest of the lake, near where the label is for Indian Creek. We were back on those logging roads somewhere. I used to live in the southwest corner of Missouri in an old railroad town that had quite a few missing people here and there, mostly due to a high tweaker population. I lived in what we call the holler, at the bottom of the tops of two enormous hills. A creek ran through the holler but was mostly dry throughout the year. Despite it being dry, living in what was basically a ravine makes the land and hills damp and misty. The woods surrounding our trailer were perpetually green year round and thick. You could walk in one direction for 10 minutes and get lost. Generally, we kids used the creek bed as a path, as there were flat rocks along it that were easier to navigate than the Vina, lush forest floor. One day, in the middle of the summer, I decided to go for a walk in the woods. As usual, our red-nosed pit bull, Fatty, came along. The sun would be setting soon, but I was home alone a lot at that time, so there was no one around to tell me not to go. I figured I had enough time before sunset to walk to a certain point and back. It was 7.30, and the sun set at around 9 o'clock at that point in the summer. The minute I started trekking it through the creek bed, 
My pit bull started whining. He didn't leave my side once but was reluctant, stopping here and there to smell the air and looking behind us. I figured maybe there was an animal in the area, so I didn't worry too much. There was a point in the creek bed where I had to duck under two fallen trees. It was sort of a bridge in the middle of the creek and acted as a turnaround point for most of my walks. My dog was still whining, and I began to wonder if there was a cougar or even a bear in the area, but for some reason I wanted to keep walking. I dove under the trees, shushed fatty, and stopped to listen to the woods surrounding us. I heard nothing. I heard literally nothing. No wind, no snapping twigs, not even any birds. Even on calm days with no wind, those woods were usually teeming with sounds and life. Nothing was ever still, but now it was. It made my stomach feel like it was dropping down into a pit. Then, I began to feel really weird. I can't really describe it as a gut feeling, but suddenly my body felt very queasy and oversensitive, and worse, I had the distinct feeling that I was being watched. I felt similar feelings when being watched by a bear, it's weird, but something tells you to get the duck out of dodge when there's a huge animal nearby. Humans are animals, we get these instincts. Every time I experienced an animal that could potentially hurt me in the woods, I immediately turned around and went home. My dog had always alerted me by barking or growling, but not this time. Fatty was scared and trembling. I'd seen this dog get hit by a truck before and get up like nothing had happened, and he was terrified. All signs pointed to leaving, right? But no, another weird thing happened. Call it being an edgy teenager or anything else, but I felt this strange pull into the woods. There was no sound, but I felt like something was calling me, luring me deeper into the woods. It was the creepiest thing I had ever felt in my life, but I was so curious. I wanted to know what the hell wanted me to wander further ahead. I walked forward, aware that my dog had firmly planted himself in the fallen trees. He was shaking all over and yelped at me as I walked away, but he didn't come with me. He also didn't leave, which I believe potentially saved my ass that day. I left Fatty behind and eventually got to the part of the creek that I had never been to. It was a clearing with a ring of trees surrounding it, with the creek stretching far ahead and going around an unseen corner. The sun hadn't moved, and it was still silent. I stood in place for a minute and considered turning around. The clearing was creepy and felt devoid of everything. I can't explain it well enough. I felt like if I walked around that corner, which was just about 100 feet away, something terrible would happen. It felt like something was just waiting for me to walk into it, unsuspecting. I brushed it off as paranoia. I had plenty of sunlight left, and I could explore alone for once. Besides, if something was drawing me further in, I might find something amazing. I took a couple more steps, and suddenly I heard my dog yelping frantically behind me. Startled, I turned around quickly, my dog looking like a little white speck far back into the trees. He was pacing back and forth at his spot and barking like it would kill him if he didn't take off running. He kept lunging forward but wouldn't move any distance forward. I finally realized that something was very wrong. I turned around again to look back at the clearing. It was pitch black outside. I SHT you not. Seconds ago, the sun wasn't even close to going down below the horizon, and now the stars were out. No sun. No light. I stared hard at the trees around the corner, seeing nothing but elongated shadows. I heard a twig snap. All of a sudden, my ears started to ring, and panic flooded my entire body. I whipped around and shot back towards the fallen trees, sprinting towards my dog. He was snarling and barking like mad, and when I dove under the trees, both of us sprinted back towards the house. The entire time, I felt like I had death on my heels, and Fatty never once ran ahead of me, staying right by my side the entire way back. When I made it home, I checked the clock. During a walk that usually took 10 minutes, I had been gone for 3 hours. I'd left my house at 7.30 and arrived home at 10.30. My parents were due home in an hour. The next day, I walked only part way back to where I could see the clearing. The very farthest I could have walked was about 2 miles, and it took 3 hours. To this day, I have never felt so prowled upon in the woods. These woods weren't part of a national park, but if you walk 10 miles or so, you could reach Mark Twain National Park. People go missing there often, seeing as the woods can be impossible to navigate after dark and have large hollows in the middle of the woods that people can roll into and get stuck in. I don't know what wanted me in the woods that day. I didn't see what it was, and it said nothing to me, but I ignored every natural instinct I had to run until it was almost too late. My dog being there may have been the reason I didn't wander deep into the woods of Missouri and succumb to someone or something in the dark. I have never told anyone in my waking life about this. What do you guys think? Have you heard of any 411 cases involving Missouri woods and hollers? Do any of you have similar experiences if you're from the area? 
I live in a beautiful area and like to go hiking whenever I get the chance, oftentimes alone. On this particular day, I chose a trail that goes past Little Molas Lake and up into a basin area with wide open expanses and great views of the surrounding mountains. This is an important detail for later, I passed one hiker and one hunter on the way up the trail. Since it was so open, we could see each other well before we crossed paths. I continued for a while until it started to get late, stopped for a snack, then headed back down the same way I came. Something glinting in the sunlight caught my eye. I looked up and saw what I thought were two hikers coming towards me. My first thought was, man, they've got some serious mountaineering gear on, as it looked like they were wearing huge chrome hard hats, thermal blanket type jackets, and pants, and they were both carrying something like rope but looked more like a hose. It looked heavy because they were both carrying it on either end. I realized this sounds absurd, I only realized how weird it was afterwards. I see that we are about to pass each other, so I step off the trail for a second to let them have the right of way as uphill traffic. I enjoy the view, then turn to see why they haven't passed yet, and. They are gone. Baffled, I look all around and can see for miles in every direction, but they are nowhere. Remember, they were completely dressed in what honestly looked like aluminum foil, so they were not easily missed in the bright sun. Also, they could not have easily run or hid because they were carrying that heavy hose or whatever it was. Getting increasingly confused, I continue forward, thinking they may have gone into a cave, perhaps. I have come across caves in this area where the opening is flat to the ground, so you would never know it was there until you were on top of it. Scary, yes, I walked off the trail on either side where they disappeared to see if there was an opening in the ground, but nothing. Even though it was getting late, I kept checking the perimeter of the trail and continued looking across the way for silvery flashes of light but saw nothing. I even called out in case they were in need of help. Nothing. I gave up and hiked to my car, baffled. Strange hunting experience. I went squirrel hunting one afternoon with my father and brother. It was a Saturday, and we were all off work and did not have to work the next day. I was carrying a 16-gauge bolt-action shotgun that held three shells. On this day, I was loaded with number 5 or number 6 squirrel shot. Upon arriving at our hunting location, we decided to split up to hunt alone and meet back at the car later, just before dark. We have done this on many occasions in the past. My father would usually get back to the car first and blow the horn, three short beeps, so we knew he was ready to go. This particular afternoon, I decided to walk down the RR tracks and away from them farther than usual. I used to hunt alone a lot and had no fear of the woods. I actually enjoyed the solitude and liked observing nature. I had to jump a 6-8 watery ditch beside the tracks to get into the woods. It was around 3 p.m. when we arrived, and it was a very pleasant afternoon. Just a little cool, the sun was still quite a bit above the tops of the trees with no, or very little, clouds. This was perfect squirrel hunting, and the timing was right. I had absolutely no ill feelings or misgivings at this point. I knew where I was and was enjoying the afternoon. I crossed the ditch and stepped into the tree line. I stopped by a small oak tree to listen to the wind and any animal activity. I heard the wind, birds, and some squirrels barking in the distance. Everything was fine at first. As I stood there, I began to notice that the sky was changing. In a matter of a few moments, the sky had become very overcast, and the humidity had actually increased. There was now a thin, wispy fog at ground level, just over the top of the forest ferns that grew in this area. I remember thinking, wow, is it going to rain? What a quick change in the weather. I stood there, thinking that we might get wet. I realized that the woods had suddenly become very quiet. I felt as if the atmosphere around me had become heavy and gloomy. I was within half a mile of a paved road and within two miles of the Savannah, Georgia, airport, but it was so quiet that my ears were ringing. This got me a little spooked. I remember thinking of just turning around and walking back out of the woods, but we had just gotten there, and I knew my father and brother would not be ready to go. Plus, I would have to explain to them why I had stopped hunting so early. I had started to feel that something was just not right. I had not moved from where I was standing near the tree. This is when I noticed a movement in the ferns about 200 feet. In front of me. I thought it might be a possum, a squirrel, a rabbit, etc. What really startled me was that this thing started running directly towards me. I could see the ferns moving as they came running in my direction. I could hear footfalls and the ferns shaking. This is very, very unusual behavior for a wild animal. I thought that maybe it was a lost dog, I suddenly realized that this could be a rabbit animal. At this point, I lowered my shotgun and pointed it at the, so far, unseen animal. When I did this, the thing changed direction when it was about 30 feet from me and ran off to my left. 
I never did see what it was and have assumed all these years that it was something so small that I just could not see it, even though it was moving the ferns pretty well as it ran through them. Whatever it was kept going until it was about 50 feet from me and stopped. The ferns were only about 2 or 3 feet tall in this area and not very thick. I could never figure out why I never saw this thing. After just reading the story in one of Mr. Pauline's books where the lady said she was dragged through the woods by her hair by something she could not see, my mind went immediately to this experience. Was this thing running towards me actually bigger than I realized but invisible? Was I simply seeing the ferns move as its legs were pushing them aside as it came towards me? This thought is a little unnerving to me, even today. Also, the fact that this thing turned when I pointed the gun at it seems to suggest that it knew the gun could hurt it. I was really wondering about what just happened and was getting more of a feeling that I needed to get out of there, so I almost turned to leave the way I had come. However, my pride and man-up mentality made me shrug this off. I then walked forward in the direction of where this thing had come from. I decided to walk to my right a little and in the direction of where my brother should be and just get out of there. After walking a short distance, I came to a very thick and tall patch of briars. The briars were about 8 feet in height and about 10 feet in depth. I remember thinking that I had never seen such a large patch of briars in this area before. I looked in both directions to see if there was a way to walk around the briars and could not see an end in either direction. It reminded me of a very large row of concertina wire from a World War II battlefield. My first thought was, oh well, I'll have to go back the way I came. As soon as I had this thought, I was overtaken by a very, very ominous feeling that something was not right here. At this point, I decided, very uncharacteristically of me, to push through this patch of briars and get to the other side, no matter what it took. I got scratched pretty badly on my arms while doing this, but I could not help myself. I kept pointing my shotgun behind me with my right hand while pushing the briars away with my left. In case this rabbit animal charges me again, I was surprised again. When I got on the other side of the patch of briars, the first thing I noticed was that the sun was out and setting low behind the trees. The sky was clear again. It was 5.30 pm now. I could not believe it had taken me two and a half hours to walk 200 feet. I could hear birds singing and squirrels barking. The atmosphere was back to normal, and I knew everything was as it should be. Then I heard my father beeping the car horn, signaling it was time to go. What a great feeling it was to hear that horn. I never told my father or brother about this experience. I am not sure why. Maybe because I knew that it was such a strange experience that they would have to have been there to feel the foreboding feelings to understand it. I guess I even felt a little embarrassed about getting spooked while hunting and walking through a patch of briars instead of going back the way I had come. Now, after reading Mr. Pauline's books, I wonder if I came close to something very alien or evil that day? So, I live in a pretty rural area where most neighbors are at least a mile away in any direction. As you might imagine, I live in the south, and as such, my house is surrounded by woods. It's really nice, though if you aren't accustomed to it, I can imagine that it would be quite a culture shock. I grew up around here and am completely comfortable going for long walks through the woods to think. I know how that must sound to a lot of technophiles, and don't get me wrong, I love the internet just as much as the next girl, but there is just something wonderful about being able to get away from all that and reconnect with nature. Earlier today, I set out on a morning walk. I have had a lot on my mind lately, especially with school and college applications, money, etc. just life in general. It has never failed to make me feel better about getting out and walking along the dirt path that my family and friends have helped me wear out. With the cool, crisp November air, the sun wisping through the colorful leaves overhead, and the remnants of the other trees that had already loosened their feathers, so to speak, crunching underfoot, it was starting out to be a gorgeous day. It was certainly the perfect day to get out and walk. As I stated before, I have been doing this exact same thing on my own since I was five. And while that might seem a little too young for a kid to be out in the woods by themselves, remember that I mentioned I'm from the south. Crime happens here, but it generally stays closer to the cities, where there are more people to victimize. Plus, my parents are pretty old-fashioned when it comes to children, and the fact that they did the same thing they now allow me to do gives you an idea of what I mean. Basically, even though it might not be the smartest stance in the world, I live in a pretty laid-back area. That being said, after today, I don't believe I will ever go back out into the woods again. Ever. I'm not sure where to begin trying to explain what I saw, but if something happens to me, I want people to know the truth. If I suddenly disappear, I did not run away, and if something even worse turns up, just know that I did not do it to myself. Alright, I had been on the trail for about an hour when I noticed another, much smaller, path heading off to the right. It was hard to see since it didn't really start at the main path, more like it just sort of began about 20 feet away. 
I honestly don't remember seeing anything like this before, but in my own defense, I did go down a much lesser used path than I normally do. The reason is that I have walked the other path several times lately, and it actually ends sooner, meaning that I would have to turn around and go back earlier than I really wanted. These woods are big, but they aren't endless. Eventually, staying straight on the trail, my usual route, will bring you out at one of my neighbor's homes. This path, since it snaked off the main path, went a whole lot deeper. It's also a really pretty walk since it is mainly untouched. Back to that path, though. I admit now that I did get that turn around and walk away, pretend you never saw this feeling in my gut. However, stupidly, I let my curiosity get the better of me. I half leapt, half ran over the taller portions of heavy overgrowth, even snagging my jeans on some rusty old barbed wire that had clearly not been used in at least 50 years. It still might have been a good time to turn around, but I wasn't bleeding too badly and continued on. About a hundred or so feet in, the ground sloped downward really sharply. It almost looked like someone had taken some heavy machinery and dug a 30-foot wide, 20-foot deep ditch through an entire section of woods there. It must have been a long time ago, though, as there were fully grown trees jutting up in every direction. Now here is where you figure I got freaked out by seeing a huge hole in the ground, realized that I couldn't get across it, and turned to go back. This is where you would be wrong. Instead, I grabbed a thick-looking branch and started following the tree down into the pit. I know this was such a dumb move, but I was intrigued at this point. It took about half an hour and some really fancy maneuvering, but I managed to reach the bottom of the incline in one piece. I wasn't really prepared for how dark it was going to be. I should have thought of that, the woods themselves aren't all that bright, even with the sun shining, but this place was like the woods inside the woods. It was dark, like nighttime darkness. I looked around to see if something had maybe landed here or something to be the cause of the great scar on the earth above me, and yes, I did think about aliens briefly. I didn't see anything, though, and assumed that if there had been something there at one time, it was likely gone now. Still, I took a few minutes to allow my eyes to adjust to the darker area and started walking, surveying the sides and ground for any kind of markings. I didn't see any. I did spot an odd-looking portion though, set off to the farthest side of the hole from where I came into it, and decided to get a better look at it. As I got closer, I realized that there were several fallen trees laid, stacked, and braided to one another, with heavy ivy growing around them. This was a very eerie sight, as all the collected debris looked very much like a makeshift house. You know that feeling you get when you look at an optical illusion? The one that says, I know something looks off about this, I know it does, I just can't put my finger on it. I had that. It was like my eyes had already processed something more than they had relayed to my brain. I started moving a little closer, trying to figure out what I was missing. The smell hit me first, I have no idea how I missed that before, it was like a week old roadkill in the summertime. And believe me, if you have never smelled that before, consider yourself lucky. But it wasn't just that, there was another smell mixed in that I couldn't place at first, and then it hit me that it smelled like my grandmother, who always smells like vanilla. These two smells did not complement each other. At all. That was when I began noticing other things that I hadn't been aware of before. Like the skittering sound of something all around me, imagine really quiet sculptulas, the immediate feeling of not being alone, and all the toadstools. I know that sounds weird, but once I got close enough and started paying attention, I noticed that there were a lot of red and white mushrooms growing all over the trees, brush, and even on the ivy. It was at this point that I caught a brief movement inside the treehouse and leaned in closer to see if I saw it again or could make out what it was. Eyes. There were pale green eyes looking back at me. I don't. I care if no one ever believes this, but those were eyes. They didn't blink, move, or do anything else, but the realization of what I was seeing sent me flailing backwards. I landed right on my butt, and yes, it does still hurt. I'm not proud of this next part, but I figured I should be honest and share everything. At least that way, maybe someone can actually help. I jumped back to my feet, screaming like a banshee, and grabbed a hold of some of the debris holding this little thing together. It was a lot tighter than you might imagine, especially considering that it was all dead. I wish I could say that I ripped a huge chunk of it out and was able to quickly see what those eyes belonged to, but here is where it does get a little embarrassing. I couldn't budge any of it. I yanked and yanked. I yelled at it, cussed it, and even smacked it a few times. I know. I know. After what felt like an eternity, I gave up and just sort of cried at it. It's really embarrassing looking back on it but I was scared and had been pumped full of adrenaline, only to gain absolutely nothing from it. Something pretty heavy shifted inside the brush, and I honestly screamed, climbed out of that hole at record speed, and cried all the way home. 
I haven't been able to tell anyone else since my parents are both still at work, and truthfully, I am supposed to be in school, and I can't see anyone actually believing me anyway. What freaks me out the most though is not finding that little path, all that brush and debris pilled up in one area, or the smell, or even the eyes, it's what I saw when whatever that was shifted. I saw huge, jagged, long teeth right underneath those pale eyes. Something was not only looking back at me, but it had actually smiled at me, I don't know what to do at this point. I don't really want to go back out there, but I also don't know if I can ever sleep again, not knowing what that thing was. I've been home for about two hours now and have just stopped shaking enough to write all this down. I keep hearing that creepy skittering sound again, like something is scratching the side of my house. I'm really scared. I swear, I'm being watched. I think something might have followed me back. So less than a year ago, I think last spring, me and my wife, who I'll call R, and our baby wanted to walk some trails through this natural park we usually go to, but it was closed because it had recently rained really hard, so I had an idea to go to these other trails that I had noticed the other day. Strangely, this area wasn't very far from populated areas, but if you turn off this highway, you end up on a really hilly road where one side is apartments and the other side is the tall trees of the area we were going to walk through. So we park and we have a stroller, and immediately there are two possible paths to choose from. One leads up and is more smooth, and the other is rocky and leads down. We chose to go down even though it was rocky and we had a stroller because we saw some people on the other side, and this one seemed like no one was on it and it would lead through fender trees. We go down this incline for a bit, then cross a small wooden bridge across a creek. I remember immediately saying, hey, do you smell that? It smells like sugar cookies or baking, but she didn't smell it. The trails start leading uphill, and I remember we stopped at a place where, behind us, you can see the land stretching up with many trees on it so far away. It was weird because I had never been here and didn't realize it was densely wooded here, and it was so quiet. There were many fresh smells, and everything had moss on it, orange, green, and yellow, I guess because of the rain, but it felt peaceful. We were talking, and R said, hey, do you hear that? I didn't, but she said it sounded like a padding sound. I thought maybe it could be a rabbit, but when we paused and looked around, we didn't see or hear anything. Now I'm more acquainted with nature, woods, and whatnot, but she wasn't. I figured she was just overly worried about predatory animals or whatever, but she was okay to keep going because it didn't sound too major. Up to this point, I was just enjoying the rich smell of the wet forest. I hadn't smelled anything strange except for the sweet sugar cookie type smell, like baking previously. We continued walking, and R said she heard something, so we would stop and look around, but it was completely silent except for the trees rustling in the breeze. Light shone through the top of the trail between the gaps in the trees, but on the side, it was quite shady due to the leaves and foliage. This happened a couple of times, and I assumed she was just getting spooked for no reason. Then all of a sudden she was like, "Eu, do you smell that? It smells like something dead or rotting. At this point, I started sniffing, and on the first sniff, I thought I smelled cologne or perfume, but what is strange is that I would breathe and then take a deep whiff over and over again, but each time I did, I was smelling some new smell, like I was cycling through many various scents, from perfume to just kind of musty to nothing and then something new. That was weird, but it still didn't seem like anything was going on. I honestly just thought it was very peaceful how quiet it was, aside from the slight rustling of trees, and there was moss on everything so multicolored. I had actually not seen so much moss before. As we got further along, maybe because it was so quiet, I really don't know, I kind of chuckled and said, yeah, I am kind of getting a creepy vibe here. And I really was. I can't explain it, but it simply felt a little surreal or something. And about five or six times up to this point, she said she had heard something, and we would stop and look around and hear nothing but the trees. And, to be honest, you couldn't see that well because of the fallen trees, branches, and little foliage. She had also been saying she felt like something was watching us. Well, we got up a bit, and there was a part of the trail that was slightly brighter and just a little more open, but still had trees and plant life to the side. And at this area, the trail turned right and began going uphill again, just previously, it was flat. At this point, R said, did you feel that? And apparently, she felt the ground shake silently. Well, I looked around, and this time I actually did see something. I saw the top of a thin tree shake and looked down. It was far off, but to my eyes, it looked like something low and brown, waddling at a jogging speed about 50 yards out or so. It wasn't too close, so I wasn't that worried. I kept staring, and I got closer to the edge of the trees to try and see it. As I'm looking, I'm like, oh wow, it's just a guy riding a horse over there. 
I assumed there was another trail over there because it looked like a guy riding a horse with brown legs, and the man must have been wearing black because it looked like black over brown. I'm squinting to see, and then I realized that whatever it was, there was a thin tree to the side to step around it in a way that someone riding a horse could not possibly do. I realized that it looked tall and slightly hunched, and it appeared to be kind of stalking around us. I honestly freaked the duck out, ha ha. I took the baby out of the stroller and gave her to R, and we ran back with me hanging in the back and facing backwards. I was dragging the stroller behind me while I faced that way to watch our backs. We basically ran all the way back to the front of the trail, near where we began, but still kind of in the forest. We were catching our breaths, and we were really excited, just kind of saying, what the duck was that? She didn't see it, but I did, and I was telling her what I saw. We were freaked out and just excitedly talking about what we saw when we saw something else on the trail. Now this is where it gets even weirder. He was coming from the way that we came when we originally arrived, at the beginning of the trail. He was a bearded white guy with a backpack, no shirt, and a few short shorts on. I think he said something from a distance, like got a little lost back there, and he was smiling big. This was in the middle of us talking excitedly, and I started laughing and was like, wow. That was you? We were freaking scared, man. He didn't explicitly say, yeah, that was me, but he was like, yeah, I like to try and explore everything. It's so beautiful out here, isn't it? I'm going to see if there's anything I missed, and he ended up going the trail the way we just ran from. It wasn't until he left that we were like, wait, how'd he get all the way back here behind us if that was him in the trees? And how come he's not all scratched up from running through the foliage and trees with his skin exposed? The area is too dense with plants and trees to not be scratched, especially if you are running, which he must have had to do in order to get all the way around us. Although he didn't explicitly say, yeah, that was me, it did seem that he acknowledged to us that it was indeed him that we saw. He seemed really friendly and was smiling the whole time, but I can't tell if maybe we didn't see him at all and perhaps he wasn't saying that we did or what, but we left immediately after that.